Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be going over the Black Temple loot prio. There's gonna be a link in the description and probably a pinned comment too, um, linking to the Hygel loot prio. Just split it off into two videos to uh, split it out a little bit because it's gonna be a, a long one for Black Temple here. So be sure to check that out. And uh, there is going to be some uh, references to previous prio in Hygel that I'll, I'll go through here as well. So it might make sense to watch that one uh, first, but however you want to do it is fine. And uh, lastly, just a quick little uh, plug, check out my Twitch, twitch.tv slash Zatar underscore wow to, uh, you know, further support me and uh, check out my live stream. So anyway, onward to the tier six prio, Black Temple. All right, so we have first up the Shroud of the Final Stand. Now this is a nice item, uh, obviously a healing cloak and uh, it doesn't have spirit on it, and for that reason, the Kael'thas cloak, the sun shower light cloak, or whatever it's called, is is going to be better than this for druids and priests because that's just a really nice cloak. Um, that cloak also does have more healing than this, uh, but if your healers are interested in that 11 MP5, this is a better overall item for a paladin or a shaman than that item, uh, even though it isn't higher in healing. Now, for holy paladins, this is on some bis lists. And uh, you do want to make sure and prio this to a Holy Paladin if they are running the Holy Light build uh, and, you know, mainly focus on tank healing and spamming Holy Lights because this is considered best in slot uh, in that build to, you know, just have as much mana and mana regen uh, and sustain as possible to be able to infinitely Holy Light to keep your tank up. But, um, you know... Otherwise speaking, if your Holy Paladin just is really looking for max output and spamming plus healing, maybe this would be better suited for a Shaman. Um, but the reason I would definitely say give this to a Holy Paladin before a Shaman is because Shamans are going to be higher on the cloak that comes from Illidan, the Haste Cloak. So, uh, nice item. Definitely a nice item. Next, we have the Treads of the Dead Mother. Not really much to talk about here. This item has really high armor. It is best in slot uh, mitigation for a feral and a lot of tank sets are going to be running this as a bear uh, if you were a cat you would not be interested in this item so that's that next we have the pillagers gauntlets um, these are not best in slot they are kind of just a, a temp upgrade potentially uh, for a ret or a warrior now again the ret wouldn't even use these if they have gloves of the searing grip but yeah just you know, look at the gloves of your current warriors and hand these out. Uh, maybe give these to the warrior that is not getting the Silent Justice gloves, I believe they're called, but the, the good um, armor pen gloves that are uh, going to be best in slot for warriors if they don't go for the set bonus. Uh, next, we have Girdle the Light Bear. Uh, this is not a very good item. It's a plate DPS haste option. Not very good. On to Band of Devastation. Uh, this one is the least contested of the haste rings. It's not technically in a ton of best in slot lists, but it's kind of tied for several. Uh, so for example, Rep Paladins, this is um, considered best in slot in some lists for a Rep Paladin, uh, but some lists are going to say that the crit um, strength ring is going to be better Either way, I think this is best used on a ret because they are one of the classes that, generally speaking, is never going to need hit from their ring and uh, would just make sense to give them a Band of Devastation to hold them over. Uh, if you give rets the Band of Devastation, then you can safely give warriors the crit ring and then enhances the hit ring. So I think this just makes the most sense, but all things considered, you can go with biggest upgrader. Um, you know, especially after the ret gets it, you can go with like biggest upgrade because it is not uh, a ring that is as big of a deal relative to the next two rings we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the healing haste ring. Uh, keep in mind that even though this is a healing ring, it is still relatively good for a caster, um, but obviously significantly better for a healer because of you know the healing clause there. You almost get three times the healing that you do the spell power. So... Um, how how should we go about this ring, right? So obviously this ring is very good for every single healer. I don't think it super matters who gets this ring first between Shaman and Priest. You can set it equal. Um, it really just depends on your guild. If you've got a really pumper Shaman, 
giving them a bunch of haste could really help your guild uh, clear content. If you've got a pump or priest, it could really help you clear content. In this case, I have priest before shaman because the Illidan cloak, I have shaman before priest. Um, the mindset there or the logic is that uh, it's more likely that your resto shaman is going to get a lot of early gear if they're getting tier and your priest is less likely to get an early upgrade. Um, so the reasoning here is that your priest would be getting an early haste ring and a nice solid early upgrade, whereas your resto shaman would uh, be getting a bunch of tier. So it kind of helps space out the loot. You've got an early item to the priest. The shaman's already getting early items. And then the Illidan cloak is going to come later. And when we get to the Illidan mace, you're going to see that it's going to be prior to a priest. So I think it balances things out that you, you know, spread out the Illidan loot, spread out the early loot. And at the end of the day, uh, though, it, it doesn't super matter um, the exact sequence of who you give it, whether to a priest or a shaman, they both are going to be great with haste. And uh, they're both going to be, you know, benefiting quite a bit. You can also look at the current rings. It is a little bit more likely that maybe the priest would have better rings due to the fact that the ring from Vash is, is really good. But uh, yeah, just make, I, I think this is a fine order if you're going to give shamans their tier early. This gives something nice early to the priest. Um, now, I mentioned Resto Druid. Kind of the same thing we've discussed in the Hydro video, but if you didn't catch that one, basically Resto Druids have a haste breakpoint at 113 haste. Uh, if they hit and pass 113 haste, they can maintain an extra life bloom. That's really good. So if your Resto Druid is about to hit 113 haste, I would give them the ring. You're going to see with a lot of these haste items, the lesser um, contested haste items are going to go to the Druid. Uh, just at their leisure, and then the more contested items like the ring are going to go to the druid if it allows them to hit 113 uh, haste. Now keep in mind the resto druid does not need this ring to hit 113 haste, but the faster they hit the 113 haste, uh, they're going to see a huge power spike, and druids don't otherwise get a lot of gear, so I would be definitely okay with giving this ring to a druid if it would potentially give them the 113 haste maybe a week two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month before they otherwise would if they were just waiting on other drops. So, uh, Resto Druid, if it hits their haste, then Priest, then Shaman. Um, Resto Druid, you know, again, because it's still just a good ring for them. Even if you ignore this whole 113 haste breakpoint, it's still just a very good ring. And then HPAL last. Again, once again, uh, for the reason that HPAL's tank healing do not need haste, and in fact, the Paladin Discord uh, does not even think that uh, haste is very good in general for tank healing, and that's really what you want your Holy Paladin to be doing in general. Um, once again, if your your Holy Paladin is playing a different build and spamming Flash of Lights and is not going for the Holy Light build, they might want a lot more haste. They, they likely will. Um, then you just have a, a question of you know where to put the Paladin, if especially if you think that, that that setup is not even better than going for a Holy Light one. And I definitely think... Holy Light is the play for Paladin. Uh, last thing just to mention is give everyone a haste ring before everyone gets a second ring. Um, pretty much as a general, that would that would be the case. Uh, you know, maybe Paladin's the exception if they don't want it in their wrist list. But the reason I'd say give each ring is because there's this really nice rep ring. Now, this is the caster equivalent. I didn't link the healing one. Um, but the caster one is the same type of text at the bottom where your heals have a chance to proc a plus healing effect. So... Uh, the rep ring from Hygel is actually really good. So most of your healers should be chilling with either one of those rings and the Blessed Band of Caravor, or they could potentially have like the Vash ring if they're a priest or a druid as well. So generally speaking, everyone's going to have at least one decent ring, and then the haste ring would be a really nice, uh, yeah, really nice to get on one of each of your healers before doubling up. Now, we go to the caster one. Oh, and one last mention. Like I said, this is something that can be good for a caster, but I personally think you should be giving this to healers just because they get so much more value out of it. I think the caster cloak has a stronger argument than the uh, the ring to go to casters, but um, yeah, I would definitely give it to your, your healers first. If your healers don't want it, you get to the end. You can start giving it to some casters, but again, it's, it's not even best in slot for them. So unlike the 
uh, the haste cloak, which we'll get to from Illidan, which is a healing cloak that can be good for for casters. Uh, this is even more, uh, you know, pointed towards being a healer item because it's not even best in slot for casters. Uh, and they definitely have multiple alternatives. Like this this ring compared to this caster ring here, I think generally speaking, uh, the caster ring it just would be a complete waste to ever replace Band of the Eternal Sage with Blessed Band of Karabor. Um, you know, it just seems very inefficient to me, especially with how nice this proc is that is on the ring. So, um, yeah. On to the caster ring. So this is the caster ring. This is the most contested ring. Um, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, once again, it is going to be very good for Warlocks, Boomies, and Elementals. Now you might say, you know, what is this, man? What, what's going on? Warlock... Uh, is like the best caster and if they get a bunch of haste they can spam seed of corruption so once again the reason why there's going to be equal signs on these items is because warlocks just get a lot of loot right keep in mind your your boomy is going to be uh you know like maybe third or fourth on tier um your warlock is all of these classes are going to be getting tier pretty fast uh, but your warlock is going to be getting skull of guldan prio uh, which we'll get to and contextually, just Warlocks are going to, you know, this is a nice phase for them. They also get a neck pretty much uncontested. Uh, so Warlocks get a lot of gear this phase. So it's a little tough to just outright, you know, prio the ring straight to a Warlock, considering other classes are likely to get less. Especially if you end up giving your Tempests or your, your Zardooms start going to Warlocks. Um, it's just, you're going to be at that point, give everything in the raid to a Warlock. So once again, this is a, a best in slot item for uh, every caster except for well, there's no except it's a best in slot ring for every caster i really strongly feel that one band of eternal sage should definitely be the play for all of your casters until everyone gets a ring i think that this ring is very good and that um you know if you're putting two ring of ancestral knowledges onto one person and they're replacing eternal sage i think the the first ring upgrade is going to be massive for a caster. This is going to be a huge increase. The second one is going to be a lot smaller because of how good this ring is. So give one to each caster. Um, Shadow Priest, again, if they're about to hit their 146 breakpoint, I do think this is a good call to give to a Shadow Priest. Um, but if they're not about to hit their haste breakpoint, you can give it to Warlock, Boomy, Elemental, um, you know, then Mage, then Priest. And the reason I put Mage last is because uh, Mages are going to be uh they already have a lot of really good rings and uh, technically you can get two of these band of eternal sage uh, you can get two you can get the exalted version and the revered version there's a trick i don't know how this is going to go down my my like my guess is that a lot of people are going to do this trick and um blizzard's not going to do anything about it so i think it might be kind of widespread but uh the idea is that you can get the revered ring from Hygel, you can delete it, you can turn in the quest, or you can go to the NPC and, and ask him for your ring back because you lost it. You then upgrade your ring to Exalted, and then you can item restore the revered ring. The idea being, you know, all you have to do is just get a replacement ring, get it up to Exalted, and then item restore. And now you have two of the same ring. One has the proc, one doesn't. If that is something that's widespread and, and that's something that mages are doing, um, mages would be getting the smallest upgrade from the ring uh, of the other classes because they would be losing five intellect and uh, that is not, and, and with the proc, uh, a lot of, some bislis are not even gonna list two rings and so uh, yeah, they would definitely get the smallest upgrade from a ring. So, yeah, that is the reason for the list there. But really, at the end of the day, just look at the rings your casters have and try and uh, try and make the best decision. Warlocks definitely gain a lot from this ring and would be a good candidate to get the first one as well. Uh, but, you know. It also depends if you gave like all the Vash rings to your Warlock first, it's very likely that your other casters might be lacking some good rings. Anyway, on to the second ring. Uh, this is just something to note. If you have a, the, you know, you start giving second rings to everyone, it would be, 
the second ring should probably go to the Warlock before the other classes. Because relative to Band of the Eternal Sage, which is an item that's great for all of these classes, like especially Boomies, Elementals, and Mages, they like the intellect. Warlock doesn't care as much. So that's one thing I will say is, while you maybe wouldn't just immediately be stacking your Warlocks with the rings, once you start giving the second ring, I think Warlock should be getting it real quick. So, uh, you know, while we're trying to potentially help a Spreest hit their haste breakpoint, depending on their current gearing, Warlock would be the first to get the second uh, ring because they their double ring is better than everyone else. Okay, that's through all the rings. On to the Swift Steel Bludgeon. Swift Steel Bludgeon is uh, not a best in slot item for any class. I will say that for a human pro warrior, this is something that could potentially hold them over. If you compare it to Blade of Savagery, Blade of Savagery has similar amounts of hit and similar amounts of AP, and you get haste instead of crit. Um, you do lose stamina, and to be clear, Blade of Savagery is the better option for a protection warrior. But if your protection warrior is antsy and is wanting the Blade of Savagery before a rogue, I would recommend giving them the Swift Steel Bludgeon to hold them over. Uh, similar speed, only 0.1 uh, slower. And I think this is a nice maybe potential placeholder for a pro warrior while they're waiting for uh, Blade of Savagery. And then that you can give Blade of Savagery to a rogue because the rogue is a massive upgrade from this item. Uh, and we'll get to this item later. But yeah, this is Biss for rogue and a huge upgrade and also Biss for human pro warrior. And so giving this to a pro warrior that is human, specifically human, because of the expertise, uh, would make sense as a placeholder. Besides that, I mean, maybe a Fury Warrior that is missing a good offhand could make use of this, but this is not a great weapon. Um, sometimes Fury Warriors like to swap weapons in execute phase to faster weapons to get more executes off. Maybe you have a Fury Warrior that's interested in doing that with this item. This w item does have haste on it, so that would be a pretty good item to do that with. But yeah, that is, that is the deal there. Next, we have the Illidari Rune Shield. Um, this is a prop paladin item. It is not best in slot, um, but it is a nice little placeholder for them. Decent amount of stamina, decent amount of spell power. Nice item for the prop pal. Can give it to LA Shaman if they want after, but yeah, not best for them either. Cool, so that's the trash loot. On to the first boss. So we have the Slippers of the Sea Collar. Um, these have Int, Spirit, and as soon as you see those kind of stats, you're thinking, okay, this is going to be an item that is going to be good for something like a mage or a boomkin, and potentially uh, not quite as good for some of the other classes like Ellie or uh, Warlock, just because it doesn't use every stat on the item. But in this case, individually, this pair of boots is going to be best in slot for mages and warlocks and boomies. Uh, Ellie's could also use this item as well. This is technically going to best in slot for Ellie as well. So all four of these classes, it's best in slot. But you, but uh, Boomies have one alternative, and Ellie's have two. Boomkins have a leather boot that is almost the same thing, and Ellie's can use that leather boot that I just described as well as the male boot. So. The re it just really just comes down to scarcity here and the fact that Mage uses this item the most. So definitely Mage Pryo. After Mage, this should probably be going to a Warlock as long as they can make the hit work. If they're taking off like Boots of Blasting, this would be a good item to give to a Warlock. Um, and again, the Warlock doesn't have any other options in the new phase, really. Blue Suede Shoes are pretty bad. So uh, yeah, definitely Mage, then Warlock, then Boomkin, then Ellie, then Spreest. Spreest doesn't want this, and Ellie and Boomkin have other options. So pretty, I think this one's pretty set in stone. Next, the guys of the Tidal Lurker. Uh, this has a lot of MP5 on it and a bunch of healing. Uh, would probably be better for someone like an Arsham than even an H-Pal, but yeah. Just give this the biggest upgrade. It's it's not a Abyss item, but yeah, maybe maybe an Arsham in first if they're missing a helm or something, but yeah, not a great item. Just give it to whoever. Uh, just don't necessarily be set in stone on giving it to a druid just because it's leather, because it doesn't actually have spirit on it. Next, the Mantle of Darkness. Um, this shoulder is actually pretty good. Make sure not to confuse this pair of shoulders with Razor Fury Mantle from Hyjal, because they have the same icon, and they're both offset shoulders. 
Razor Fury Mantle is terrible. This item is actually near best in slot. Uh, so this is a temp upgrade potentially for a rogue, and it's close to best in slot for enhance. Uh, so I can give it to whoever makes the most sense at the time to get it right. Uh, the Enhancement Shaman might not have the shoulders of the stranger. Uh, maybe the rogue um, doesn't have their tier yet, something like that. But definitely not a best item, just try and maybe give biggest upgrade. Next, the Helm of the Soothing Current. Another item that is not best in slot, but this is very close to the value of the tier helm. And this is what you could make the argument for potentially your resto shamans. If you did want to prioritize tier to other classes like warriors and uh, hunters, you could make the argument that resto shaman does have a couple strong offset pieces that are very close to the quality of the bis and this is one of those so this is very close to bis for a shaman i would give this to a resto shaman that's maybe the last one to get tier um or even an h pal very good item very close to bis too very identical to the tier helm it just doesn't have the set bonuses next we have the fists of makua uh, the enhancement shaman wants to use a haste uh haste glove and there's a leather one and a male one so this is best in slot for enhancement, but it's basically tied with the leather alternative. So um, if your enhancement doesn't already have one of the new haste gloves in the phase, give it to the enhance. Other than that, it's gonna be a temp upgrade for either a hunter or a ret. Uh, and if the ret doesn't have a lar gloves, this could be good for them, but potentially near bis, but um, yeah, ideally they'd have a lar gloves. So yeah, give it to your enhancement shaman as it is best in slot. Uh, these are the boots I mentioned earlier. These are the boots that a elemental shaman can use. So compared to the slippers of the sea collar, they are slightly worse. But um, obviously only a shaman can use these and it's very close. So uh, definitely give this to your Ellie shaman and this should hold them over basically bis, very close to bis, but technically second or third bis um if we're gonna be technical all right all right eternium shell bracers these are not going to be on a bis list for any tank uh except for maybe a, a full mitigation set uh, give it to whichever tank you feel like would use a mitigation option or would want something like this but yeah not not a big deal but technically bis mitigation for uh for both Prop pallies get brand new wrists that are really good, so you could give this to Warrior first, but your Warrior probably won't use them if they get the PvP wrists, uh, except for a few sets. Next, we have the Pearl Inlaid Boots. Uh, H-Pal, give it to H-Pal, not Bis. Moving on. Tide Stomper Greaves. These are great for a Prop Paladin. Amazing item. Give it to your Prop Paladin, obviously. Uh, potentially, don't disenchant this. Um, and you might even consider giving this to a protection warrior before giving to like an off spec person uh, if they don't have um, uh, the, the good boots from uh, a comma and especially if they don't have the good boots in terms of mitigation from uh, Tempest Keep. They, these are actually not that bad and are significantly better than the Tempest Keep boots for mitigation even for a warrior. So... Uh, your warrior probably wouldn't want these in every situation, but they're actually better than you think for a warrior. So just check if your warrior could use these before potentially off specking them. Just a little note there, but definitely prop alley first. Uh, next, we have the Ring of Calming Waves. Uh, this is a healing ring, right, with some crit on it. It's actually not that bad for a caster compared to some of the rings they might have. So just remember that if none of your healers want this, just check and see if you have any, you know, any caster that maybe has just some bad rings, maybe a blue ring still, a newer recruit, someone who's undergeared. Um, 22 magic, 20 or spell damage, 24 crit, and 27 int is not the worst thing ever. Uh, but you're mainly going to give this to a holy paladin. Um, a lot of Arshams would, would prefer uh, an MP5 ring, but it does have 64 healing. So H paladin Arsham, then maybe see if the caster has interest. Ring of Captured Storms. Uh, this is actually a, a very good ring. It's just not going to be on any bis list. Uh, especially for something like a Warlock. This is going to be an amazing item for them if they're having any sort of hit issues. 
Uh, and you're gonna see that as you approach best in slot gear, this doesn't really fit into any gear set. But obviously, that's not how gear works for anyone. No one's gonna get best in slot in the first month. And uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a long process to get all of the gear in the phase. There's lots of competition for a lot of the good items. So uh, yeah, all things considered, this is definitely an item that is, is very good and will be used for a long time by some of your casters while they're waiting for that haste ring. Another reason potentially why Warlocks maybe shouldn't be auto-defaulted to get that first haste ring, and one of the reasons why I put in, you know, an equal sign that you can pry a Warlock, Boomy, and Ellie potentially equally, is because, um, you know, your Warlock might need a hit ring, and if that's the case, this is a great item. So, not best in slot for anyone, but definitely uh, try and get this to someone who needs hit, and if you can, it's going to be a great ring. So, Warlocks uh, would be great for it. Boomy would be pretty good. A Shadow Priest can use this as well, even though it's not, you know, super great for them. It does not have any stats. And, and stats are not something Shadow Priest actually cares as much about, like intellect and stuff. So, um, surprisingly, better than a lot of the other options they would have had from the previous phase. So, a good item for Shadow Priest nonetheless. The reason I put Elemental so far down is, in theory, they should have the ring from Karazhan and they never need hit. So uh, the Kara ring is gonna be very close to as good as this. So in theory, they, they shouldn't really want this because they can run the Kara ring and the rep ring and not need it. But again, every guild's gonna be different. Gear's gonna be different. Just try and make the most out of this ring. Mages are gonna be the class that probably just would never use it because they not only don't need hit as an arcane mage, but they really like intellect. Uh, but maybe something like a fire mage would be more more in line with a warlock if you have one. Next, we have the Maelstrom's Fury. Now, the Maelstrom's Fury is going to be a pretty good dagger, but not best in slot for any class. Uh, it is the best weapon you can get if you don't get Zardoom, if you are an elemental or a moonkin. Uh, for Shadow Priest, they can use the hit weapon or this. Generally speaking, I would say the hit weapon is going to be better because it allows them to change some talents. But if they already have enough hit that they can change their talents um, to spec out of hit and move into other things, then this would be very slightly better than the mace. So give it to your elemental first if both elemental and boomkin are uh, not getting Zardoom, I guess, because the elemental definitely can't use the hit. And if you only see one Maelstrom's Fury and you see like a million of the caster mace, I believe it's from an early boss, uh -oh. see how fast I can find it. Is it the first boss or the second boss? I think it's the second boss. I'll go show you the alternative mace that everyone uses. Uh oh, it's the third boss, we're in trouble here. All right, it should be the third boss. There it is. But this is the healing one. Oh wait, no, the caster one's from trash. Revert, revert, there we go. Pardon the delay. But this item is going to be, like we prioed before, Spreezed before Boomkin before Ellie. So it would make sense that the dagger is going to be Ellie, then Boomkin, then Spreezed. If you get like five of these to drop, then, you know, your Boomkins will have it, your Spreezed will have it, and you want to make sure that dagger goes to the Ellie. But again, still, the dagger is not the preferred uh, or the dagger is the preferred option for an Ellie and a Boomkin because they don't usually, they, Ellie definitely doesn't need the hit from that other mace. Boomkin mostly, most of the time doesn't. Uh, just remember, keep in mind Zardoom and stuff. Don't want to give this to a class that's going to get Zardoom and replace it. Now, I didn't put a greater than sign at the end here, but obviously this can go to Mage and Warlock as well. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll edit that into as, as well and put them around there. The only reason you'd maybe consider giving this to Shadow Priest over a Mage and a Warlock is because they can't use the sword. Um, but especially if the Shadow Priest has the mace or is next for the mace, I would give this to a Mage or a Warlock before Shadow Priest. Um, but it's just going to depend on the order in which you get weapons to drop. Typically this is going to be going to the classes like Ellie Boomkin um, before the Mages and the Warlocks because they have the sword as an option. But there's going to be a caster that is going to want this that is a mage or a warlock that doesn't have the sword. So uh, I would say elemental, then boomkin, then major warlock, uh, then shadow priest last. Because shadow priest probably should be getting the, uh, the mace. But it all depends on what weapons everyone has equipped currently. 
and where they're going to be on the big items. Next, Rising Tide. Uh, give this to an Orc Fury Warrior. Uh, best in slot for an Orc Fury Warrior. And uh, it's their, their best op offhand option. So make sure to give that to your Orc. It's for that expertise. Otherwise, an okay item for Fury. And some enhancement setups can use it, especially if your enhance is still using 2.6 speed weapons and is maybe missing a nice item. But yeah, I would say Orc Fury first and then potentially enhance or, or a non-Orc Fury. Could, you know whichever can use it best and the halberd this item is pretty bad it's a hunter item but not even good for a hunter too much hit so not a great item but if your hunter is missing uh the previous phase bis main hand off hand combos or whatever it could be a catch-up weapon potentially all right we're on to the second boss supremus uh, we have waist wrap of infinity now this belt is going to be near bis for a lot of classes uh, Warlocks are going to have Belt of Blasting still and are probably going to be okay with that for a bit. And uh, Boomies, Ellies, and Mages were higher prio on the Crit Belt. And Ellie has a male belt that they can use that has haste on it as well. And Boomies have a leather belt that has haste as well. So the reasoning for this priority is Shadow Priest wants this belt and doesn't really want another belt so they should get it first uh, warlocks can want this belt but it's not technically bis for them but they should still get it uh first or after a priest because other classes have options boomy uh would this would be nice for a boomy but ultimately they want the crit belt and they have a leather haste option that warlock doesn't have access to so that it really they should be behind warlock and then Elemental can not only potentially use that leather belt if there's an extra one that drops, but they also have their own male version. And then Mages are dead last because they have Pryo on the crit belt. Now again, it all depends on just how things drop. I could definitely see a Mage getting this earlier too if your Warlocks have Belt of Blasting and don't want to give up the hit. Um, Warlocks are fine with Belt of Blasting for quite a while. It's definitely a, a great belt still. And uh, yeah, I could see Mage going higher, but yeah, the main reason Mage was lower is because they are first prio on the crit belt from Anatheron, Anatheron's noose. Next we have, but again, if your Boomy and your Ellie have the haste belts, they would then pass this down the list. So uh, Mage could be just right after Warlock if hopefully those other belts are dropping. Next we have the Nether Shadow Tunic. This is not a best in slot item. Um, it's a temp upgrade for Enhance. It is second bis for Enhance. It is something they could use. Uh, a Rogue or a Feral could use this as potentially a temp upgrade. Maybe a Feral would want this for some uh, threat-related set or something if they're tanking and just want a ton of hit from one item. Eh, it's kind of a stretch. Um, the tier is so good for them and they're going to be getting tier. But yeah, uh, temp upgrade for these guys. Enhancement also, it's second bis. So just try and make the most out of it. Not, not a great item. Next, we have the Bands of the Coming Storm. Not best in slot, but Elemental's second bis. Give it to Elemental. Um, you know, once they get this, you can get the haste wrists to them last. If you're divvying out haste wrists, uh, you could look towards other classes before Ellie as well, um, because this exists. Next, we have the wrists of Res uh, Yeah, these are not good. Uh, I don't. They're actually really bad, so. It's kind of hard to find a class that would want these. They're not great for Hunter. They're not great. You know, if you've got somebody in like tier four equivalent, maybe. But even some of the tier four items are better than this for classes like Rhett. So, yeah. This is the haste belt um, for healers. Uh, this is male. Arsham before H-Pal. This for Arsham. And, uh, yeah, haste healing belt. Pretty simple. Pauldrons of Abyssal Fury. Now, these shoulders are full mitigation and actually very bad. Doesn't really matter who gets these. These are significantly worse than tier five shoulders for a warrior. I would never equip these. Um, I think they are just worse than tier five. And in terms of mitigation, I would not say that they're even significantly better than tier five. Um, tier five have agility, these don't. This has dodge, but 
you uh, they have similar amounts of defense and similar amounts of stamina, whereas tier five is, has more threat. Yeah, so not a good item at all. Next, we have the choker. This is a great item. This is very good for a lot of classes. Uh, you might see it is definitely going to be on a bis list for an enhancement in a rogue. It's going to be on every bis list for them. You might see some arms in ret lists using this to hit certain amounts of hit rating. Uh, and you can also potentially see a feral set using this to get a set amount of hit. But generally, Furies and Hunters are going to want the armor pen neck. And uh, arms is going to want the armor pen neck as well. And rets are going to use the neck from the previous phase in general. And ferals also can use the neck that drops from TK, uh, from the Verdant Sphere. So when you look at all these classes, it's really clear that Enhancement and Rogue are the best two for this necklace. Because they, it's just outright bis for them. Whereas um, for all of these classes, they'd rather have a different necklace. But they could use it if they need the hit. So give this to Enhancement or Rogue. After that, I would potentially consider an arms warrior that might be having hit issues. Um, your rep paladin's unlikely to have hit issues, but if they don't have Cursed Vision of Sargeras, they do need an item for hit, and this is a convenient item for hit because it has like the same amount as Cursed Vision of Sargeras, so it's a convenient little swap for them. But yeah, I, I would definitely say enhanced and rogue, then whoever would benefit most from the neck, mainly whoever doesn't have uh, like the armor pen neck, something like that. But Enhanced Rogue really love the hit rating, so this is great for them. The reason I put Enhancement above Rogue is because the Illidan Ring is going to be Rogue before Enhance, and Rogues get a lot of tier, and Enhancement don't. So, there you go. Uh, Band of the Abyssal Lord. Uh, this is, but again, this could be an equal sign, by the way. It's fine if a Rogue got this before Enhance. This is mainly an enhanced before rogue item out of fairness, not out of who deserves it more. They both equally would use the item and get equal power gain from it. Next, Ban of the Abyssal Lord. Great for a prot warrior. Uh, a bear could potentially use this in some sets, but yeah, especially good for a prot warrior. Give this to your prot warrior first. If your prot warrior gets this, they should not need the Illidan ring, uh, and they really shouldn't get it no matter what, but yeah, this is a good ring to say, hey, you got this ring, you don't need the Illidan ring. Keep quiet, Prow Warrior. Um, on to the Idol of the White Stag. Uh, this item is for a for someone. Yeah, give it to a druid. And uh, don't really worry about it too much. Whoever wants it. Next, we have the Brutalizer. Uh, the Brutalizer is a best-in-slot warrior item. It, it is better for warrior than... Uh, or any arbitrary warrior than it would be for human. A human warrior is going to want the the sword from Mother Shiraz that is fast in attack speed. They're going to want that eventually. But this is still good for a human prop warrior and would be something that would hold them over for a while. Uh, they might prefer to have something like the Mallet of the Tides because of their racial, um, giving them expertise with maces and swords. So, yeah. But this is going to be best in slot for every prop warrior that is not human. So, great item for a tank warrior. Next, we have the Siphon of... Uh, Nazrethem. Now, enhancement, ideally an enhancement shaman would get two of the PvP weapons, but if the enhancement shaman doesn't have two season three PvP weapons, which by the way would be tough to get and would take a lot of points, um, if they don't have both, then uh, this, two, two of these is going to be best in slot for enhancement. So uh, very good for enhance. There's a lot of different weapon combos that enhancement can use in this phase, but yeah, Two of these would be the BIS combo, and uh, if they have two 2.7 speed weapons, that's going to hold them over for a while, uh, especially like the TK ones, but yeah, eventually they're going to want two of these. So give these to Enhance first, and then maybe a Warrior. Uh, something like a, uh, you know, a Human Warrior would potentially gain a little more from this because of it's a mace and they're, uh, they're racial, but they have options uh, to have other swords that have better stats on them, so... Not exactly. It's mainly that 2.8 speed and that high weapon damage that would make this a good candidate for an enhance. And they want to match their weapon speeds. So two for an enhance and then maybe look the warrior. All right. Failstone Bulwark. Um, this has crit rating on it. This is the second shield. I talked about the shield from Archimond, the healing shield, being prior to Resto Shaman because there's another shield that's better for HPAL. 
Um, again, this is technically going to be second bis on some lists um, for a Holy Paladin, but definitely they're the, the class that should be getting this, and some lists consider this to be the best one as well. So, um, you know, bis or second bis for h power, give it to h power before Shaman, and because of this item's existence, we give the other shield to Shaman. All right, Legion Killer. Legion Killer is definitely should go to a Hunter if they're still missing like Vashbow or they need a good weapon. This is an item that would make the most sense to go to a Hunter. Uh, it is listed as best in slot on a lot of Prot Warrior Bis lists, but it's not a big deal. Definitely should go to a Hunter first if they can use the weapon, use the temp upgrade. But if no Hunter needs it, it is best in slot for Prot Warrior in some setups and it is a good item for them. But yeah, definitely look to your, uh, your Hunter first. All right, we have a shoulder that's not very good. Uh, give this to anyone who wants it. It's very bad. It's I think this thing is like very very bad, uh, even compared to like tier four and tier five, uh, very bad. Uh, we have some hit wrists. Uh, give this to anybody who wants hit. Uh, I say whoever here. This item is never. On, it's not on any bis list. If you could search far and wide at bis lists for tier six, you'll never see this item. But. Uh, just remember that this item compared to like Risks of Havoc and like a lot of items that people are still using is, is a pretty nice item. So give these to any caster that still doesn't have Mindstorm wristbands from Alar and give this to anyone who uh, maybe needs help with hit. Not going to be on any bis lists, but definitely a nice item considering I'm sure there's a lot of people that didn't get the tier 5 wrists for casters because there was only one. So... Uh, definitely not a useless item, but give to the, the class that you think uh, would just give it by upgrade since it's not this. Next, you have the Risks of Divine Influence. Um, yeah, not a great item, not bis, not even bis in terms of healing. We, we saw that there were wrists from uh, the first boss in Hygel that were better for just pure healing. And then there's also haste healing wrists. So this is definitely not a, a great item. So give to whoever priest before druid technically but biggest upgrade there all right next we have the shadow walkers cord um if your ret does not have the vash belt this could be something they could use but definitely not a a great item not bis for anyone um yeah vash belt is better for everyone than than this item and not really great for a hunter either Typically, this is going to be worse than Belt of Deep Shadow for a lot of classes as well, and like the Battle Belt for Warrior. So this, this is not a great item, but a ret could use it if they don't have the right belt. Next, we have the Kilt of Immortal Nature. Uh, this is second bis for Resto Druid. Uh, Resto Druids are going to be using this probably for a decent bit while they wait for the Cloth Legs, um, the Eternity Kilt or something, something Eternity. Uh, we talked about it in the Hydral video, um, but... Second bis for Resto Druid, barely not, but yeah, this is an item that is good for every healer that can equip it because it doesn't have spirit. So, great item. Uh, give to Resto Druid first for sure because they're way back on tier, and this is better than their tier for them. Uh, whereas the Shaman and the Paladin both want their tier. Next, Shoulders the Hidden Predator. Um, this is potentially a temp upgrade. For some classes, could be a nice temp upgrade for Hunter. Their tier five shoulders, once they break the set bonus, are actually really bad. So this would be a nice temp upgrade for them. Uh, an enhanced shaman could use this too, but their shoulders are crafted from like the recipe. So in theory, they should get them faster than potentially a Hunter might get their shoulder. Um, Rep Paladin ideally has shoulders from a previous phase, but again, if they don't, this could be used, um, but yeah. Reason for a little bit of priority here on this item, even though it's not bis, is because this these classes should pretty quickly have a different option. Ret should have something for a different phase. Enhance should get a crafted shoulder. Uh, they do have to be leather working though, so it's possible they don't have it. Even then, if the enhance has stranger as well, then they wouldn't need it either. So, anyway, spirit walker gauntlets. Uh, these are haste gloves. Give these to Resto Shamans. They are not best in slot, but uh, this is going to affect the priority of the leather gloves that have haste that are best in slot for Resto. Because Restos do have a nice little haste option to hold them over, the leather haste gloves are going to be prioed to Druid. 
Um, but yeah, this is Arsham than Holy Paladin, and not best in slot, but better individually than the tier gloves. Next, we have the Flash Fire Girdle. This is a Biss belt for the Elemental Shaman. Great belt, crit, haste, spell damage, everything they'd want, great for Ellie. Uh, because of this item's existence, all the other belts are going to go to the other casters before Ellie's, because this one's really good. Next, we have the Seeker's Wrist Guards. These are a Prop Paladin item. And for Prop Pallies, uh, it is a just a really well-statted item, right? It's going to have spell damage and you know defense stamp it's really what they want and uh, not really much else to say give it to your prop paladin and they will be uh, very happy they get a lot of items like this that are just just pure paladin items so this is uh, no different definitely give it to your prop paladin and those are the stats sorry lost internet for a second there but these are the stats for the wrists shield block rating Spell damage, stam. Perfect for a prop alley, give it to them. Next, we have the Grips of Silent Justice. These are best in slot for Fury Warriors if they're doing the offset spec. If you're going for the set bonus, they're gonna use the gloves, so they wouldn't use these. So just make sure that if one of your Furies does want the set bonus and they're going for the four set, make sure that you give this to other Warriors first. Um, and the reason why you generally give this the grips to Fury before Arms is because Arms likes going for the four set more than Fury, at least with current information. That's what it looks like they're going to be doing. Uh, Rets would not use these if they have the gloves from uh, the gloves of the Searing Grip, but it is kind of close. And uh, good alternative Rets otherwise don't have them. Keep in mind though, it would change their hit situation if they did use these. Next we have the Praetorian's Legars. This is a very wacky item for a warrior. They do not have any defense, uh, and that makes them a little weird to fit into some gear sets, but definitely a nice temporary upgrade if they can make it work in their gear set. So give it to Prot Warrior, not best in slot, kind of a funky item. Uh, onto the Myrmidon Treads. These are amazing for a Prot Warrior. Um, give it to your Prot Warrior. Could give it to the Paladin for a full mitigation option if their boot hasn't dropped yet, but yeah, definitely Prot Warrior first because they hit rating. Next we have the Ring of Disciple int Intent. Um, on paper, this is, this is actually kind of a complicated ring because this is going to be listed as best in slot for only one class, and that's Rogue. If you go far and wide looking through BIS list, the only BIS list that will show this item is Rogue. With that said, I think this ring is far better than what it sounds like because every BIS list just assumes that everyone is going to get an Illidan ring. Not everyone is, should get an Illidan ring. And uh, this ring is really important to take the place of, you know, four classes when they're not going to get an Illidan ring. So for a rogue, uh, it is near identical to the tier five rings. So in theory, you'd want your rogue to have Band of the Ranger General, a Ring of Lethality, or Ring of Deceitful Intent, or Deceitful Intent. One of those three, and then the Illidan Ring. That's what the rogue is going to get. They're going to get those two rings. One from Tier 5, or this ring, and the Illidan Ring. If they have no Tier 5 rings, this would be a big upgrade, and they can pair it with the Illidan Ring. If they do have a Tier 5 ring, your rogue should be getting the Illidan ring to pair with it, and they shouldn't go for this ring because it will be a very small upgrade over their tier five ring once they get the Illidan ring. And rogue should be prioritized the Illidan ring because it's best in slot for them the entire game. Uh, and enhancements are also gonna be getting the Illidan ring fast because it's best in slot for them the entire game. So with that said, again, if your rogue has no tier five rings, you can give them one of these, and then they shouldn't get a tier five ring in the future and then they pair it with the Illidan Ring. Uh, moving down the list, a Feral, uh, a lot of Feral bear sets can use this if they need the hit, uh, and this can be a very powerful item for a Feral, but some sets don't even want the hit. So uh, if your Feral is, isn't gonna have the Illidan Ring, which they probably shouldn't be getting it super fast, uh, they can use this in some sets to give them hit, and it would be a great option. Also Hunters. Hunters can use the hit 
and uh, eventually, you know, they'd ideally like to get an Illidan ring, but they're not going to be one of the high. Uh, they gain the least of, of pretty much every class on the Illidan ring, so they're going to be pretty low on Pryo. Uh, so while the hunter is waiting patiently for an Illidan ring, th they're probably never going to get. <clears throat> anyway, uh, while they're waiting patiently, uh, this ring is a great placeholder if they don't have Band of the Ranger General. For a hunter, Band of the Ranger General is better than this ring. So again, this is a very complex ring, and it really depends on your gear. Um, but yeah, after that, Enhance can use it, but it's probably better to give to one of these classes because Enhance can also use a lot of different rings as their second ring. And while they really like the Illidan ring, their second ring could be Ranger General. It could be the Haste ring from this phase. Um, this is not necessarily needed or anything. Prot Warriors can also use this in some of their BIS setups, and this would be a good option for a Prot Warrior that wants to run a more threat-heavy set, or if they have some arena gear, they can definitely run this ring over the, uh, I think it was this, this previous boss we just looked at. Uh, the Supremus ring, sometimes they don't need the defense. So a Prot Warrior can, can run the ring we just looked at over this one if they don't need the defense. So Prot Warriors would be a, you know, not definitely not your first option, but down the list could be used. Now you're going to see again Rogue is listed. This is a Rogue that has a Tier 5 ring. A Rogue that has a Tier 5 ring should be almost at the very bottom because it's very, very small difference between Tier 5 rings and Ring of Deceitful Intent. And then Warriors and Reds are at the very back because it's just kind of a waste to give them. So again, hopefully that made sense. This is a complicated ring. It's very dependent on what everyone in your raid currently has, but Rogue if they don't have a tier five ring, Feral if they need to hit, Hunter probably needs to hit because you're not gonna give them Illidan ring. Uh, and this is a replacement for that. Then Enhance, then Prot. Um, your Enhance might not even want this. Uh, keep that in mind. Cool. On to Blind Seer's Icon. Uh, this thing is not super great. Um, it just the reality is a lot of casters aren't going to need to hit from this. So yeah, give this to any caster that can use the hit. Unfortunately, you might not have anyone in the raid that might need this, but because it feels like, you know, how many times have I said this? Give this to a caster who needs hit. Yeah. So the point being at this point, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can get hit if you need to on your gear. This isn't though definitely not the worst option. And especially if you don't have any other good offhands. This definitely is stat for stat better for a warlock than like the badge offhand. Um, but if they don't need the hit, they're just gonna use the badge offhand anyway. So keep that in mind uh, that that is definitely a, an item that isn't that bad on paper, but it might be tough to find a home for. Next we have the Shroud of Forgiveness. This is pretty much the same thing as the cloak from Kael'thas. Uh, this one has more stamina, I believe, and but otherwise they're very, very close. Uh, give this to someone who doesn't have KT Cloak yet. Um, you could Pryo Druid before Priest, because when we get to the Illidan Cloak, the Priests are going to be higher on the Illidan Cloak than Druids, but if you do Cloak for Illidan differently, it doesn't really, again, it doesn't super matter. Give this to someone without KT Cloak. I'm sure a lot of healers are going to have the KT Cloak already. Next, we have the Blood Cursed Shoulder Pads. Uh, give this to whoever wants them. Not particularly great item. Just biggest upgrade. Garments, same thing. Biggest upgrade. Uh, probably won't find anyone that wants these. But yeah, 20 MP5 is a lot. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, not, not a good item. Next, we have the Belt of Primal Majesty. This is the Healing Haste Belt. This is going to be Druid Pryo. Um, Druid before Shaman before Paladin. Um, you could potentially give this straight to a shaman before the druid if the druid's haste situation doesn't need the haste but i think that'd be a mistake generally speaking because uh your your shaman has a male alternative as well so druid before shaman before paladin next the vests of mounting assault these are terrible uh, might look like it has a lot of agility it doesn't um, hunters can gem agility in their tier and get more agility so it's not even good for something like survival not a good option yeah anybody who wants it can have it uh, this is a great prop paladin belt give this to a prop pally uh, yeah pretty simple great for prop pal next the girdle of stability this is a belt that is very good for prop warrior mitigation 
give it to your prot warrior before your pally. Uh, your pally is not going to be as interested in this item if they have, obviously, the belt that we just looked at. But yeah, definitely if your prot warrior doesn't have the Vash belt, they'd use this, and it's a good mitigation option as well that they can use for survivability. So good item, all things considered. Next, the legs of divine intervention. Now, the or divine retribution. These are best in slot for warrior. Um, they're not that bad for ret either, but they're not bis for ret. So definitely give these to DPS warriors first. These are a, a, a big upgrade. These are a pretty big deal. Uh, this is the one piece that warriors use as their offset. So your warriors are going to be running, if they do a four set, they're going to use four pieces of tier and these legs. So they're the best off piece. And your warriors that are not running tier and running the individual items obviously would want this as well. So really nice item for a DPS warrior. Next, we have the Unstoppable Aggressor's Ring. This is going to be your DPS warrior ring. Uh, you can give this to Ret or Enhance, but I think it should definitely go to warriors first. Um, we were giving Rets an enhancement, the haste trash ring first, and enhance are higher on like the hit ring from a comma we just looked at, and that's all because warriors are highest on this. So this should go to warriors. This is a great ring. This is going to be bis in most warrior lists. Keep in mind that if you ever see a bis list that doesn't have this listed as a bis ring, uh, generally speaking, it's because that list is assuming the warrior is going to get the Illidan ring. In reality, the warriors are not going to be getting Illidan ring super fast. And so, yeah, this is this is going to be a really good ring for a warrior. There's some, I guess, debate, discussion, contention between if this is better than like Band of the Ranger General or better than maybe even the Haste Ring. But in reality, um, yeah, widely seen as the best of the three uh, overall and is definitely going to be a ring that your warriors are going to want no matter what, uh, because Illidan Ring is not going to be something that goes to them quick. Next, we have the Shadow Moon Insignia. Uh, this is kind of a cool item. It has an active use to increase your health, and it gives defense and dodge. Um, something that a bear can use to help them not get crit. Bears have a really hard time with defense and resilience to try and get immune to crit. So definitely Druid could use this the most. A Prot Warrior could also use this in some sets as well. Um, some very, very weird sets, but yeah, they could use this. And prop paladins probably wouldn't use this as much because they just really like. Uh, if they were going to go for like a really aggressive set, it would. They'd probably want spell power trinkets. So, uh, yeah. Druid before warrior before prop. You're going to see this on some druid bis lists and probably not on any prop warrior or paladin bis lists. But druid before them, pretty pretty neat item, all things considered. Next we have the messenger of fate. Uh, the messenger of fate is not really. A good item. Um, this is an item that is technically slightly better than the offhand from Alar for a hunter. So one of those claws can be very, very slightly replaced for a very small upgrade. Ideally, you'd give it to someone that didn't have that. So there you go. Staff of Immaculate Recovery. Uh, staff, not too great. Uh, it's the second best staff. Try and give it to someone that doesn't have a good one hander. Um, yeah, if they already have a good offhand, this is probably not going to be bis just because it's not a great staff. If they already have a good main hand, it's probably not going to be worth using for most classes. It is significantly worse than the staff from Archimonde, but it does look cool. So just to show you the visual, um, it actually is like an angel with wings and it looks like the tier five priest set. So if you see, this is a tier five priest using the staff and it matches. So if any of you are style gamers out there uh, and you're a priest, you might be interested in the staff as you will look pretty cool while running around with this thing. Next, the wand of prismatic focus. Spriest versus warlock versus mage. Yeah, spriests, this is best in slot. For warlock, if they still didn't have the hit wand from uh, tier five, they could use this but the tier 5 wand is better the fallen stars i think or something like that and then mages still want mag wand over this cool on to reliquary of the lost these gloves of unfailing faith now this is kind of a weird item so like i've mentioned a few times throughout the video there are some holy paladin setups that are going for high mana regen high intellect and they're trying to cast as many holy lights in a fight as possible without running out of mana. 
So with that said, if you do have a paladin in your guild that is playing the set that is going full sustain and trying to crank out as much healing as possible, um, these would be best in slot in that setup. Uh, the paladin tier gloves are also really bad. So you can give this to a paladin first. Otherwise, just give it to a priest. So not bis for priest, second bis, but pretty close to bis. Um, and then for paladin, can be bis in those regen sustain sets. Next we have the, and, and just to be clear, when I'm discussing these sets of this, this very high MP5 um, set for a paladin, not every guild is even going to have a demand for something like that. Uh, some guilds that have extremely fast kill times uh, would not be as interested in some of these sustain items and probably that build as a whole would be wasted in a guild that has really fast kill times. So just keep that in mind. They're, they're probably going to want a lot of haste. Next we have the Illunite Empowered Bracers. Uh, these are not great. Once again, comparing it to like something like the Racers of Havoc, this can be a nice temp upgrade, but yeah, not, not a great item. Uh, still a decent chance your boomy might get some use out of it though. Next, the grips. Enhancement, best in slot. We mentioned earlier the male gloves that are also haste gloves. Um, yeah, give this to your enhancement. If they have the male version, they don't really need these. If they have these, they don't really need to get the male version. Uh, but yeah, that is those are the two glove options. I, technically speaking, the leather version are slightly higher DPS, but yeah. After that, Rets uh, can use these if they don't have the expertise gloves. Uh, warriors, hunters, and rogues could potentially get a temporary upgrade for these, but not bis for anyone but enhance. Next, the nature warden treads. These are the MP5 uh, spell damage and crit boots that are good for boomkins and ellies. Um, when talking about the boots from the first boss of BT that we discussed, that we said were mage prio, we mentioned that boomkins and ellies have a leather option. That is going to be this pair of boots. So MP5, spell damage, crit, they're leather, and they're pretty good. Nature Warden Streds. So make sure to snag these as they are uh, you know, basically bis for Boomkin, and they should be happy with them for a long time. But just note that for each class, technically the cloth boots with crit are better from the first boss. But very, very small difference. Next, the Wave Mender's Mantle. Uh, whoever, not a great item. Healing item, obviously. Just give it to whoever. Next, the Bone Weave Girdle. This is, I think I'm, I'm putting my claim as, I think this is the most underrated item in the phase. Uh, I think this is it. This item is not on any bis list. I have never seen a bis list with this item listed. With that said, I think that this is, in many cases, the best hunter belt. Um, there's another belt called the, the Don Alejandro belt, I believe. And this belt is better in many reasonable hunter sets. Because you have to remember, every single hunter bis list, and I can... Uh, I have a link up here to all the different BIS guides, so maybe this can help give some context. Uh, every single Hunter BIS list is going to you know, list a ton of items that you're not going to be getting as a Hunter very quickly. right? So this Hunter BIS list includes Cursed Division of Sargeras, which has hit, the Insidious Wrists, which have hit, Madness of the Betrayer, which has hit, Storm Rage Signet, which has hit, right? All of these items have hit. Same thing with the other gear set. I think it uses the exact same items that I just mentioned. Oh yeah, all the same items. So when you have that much hit rating coming from contested items, you need to make up for that hit if you're not getting them. So hunters are not going to be getting Illidan ring very quickly. Um, madness, again, there's going to be a lot of people that want this trinket. If you're a hunter without this, you need hit. Uh, if the wrists just aren't dropping, you know, as a hunter, you need to hit. And so when you look at all these different items, um, it's a very, very reasonable and a cursed vision. If it's not dropping or if hunters, you know, you're going to see enhancements getting this before hunters. If hunters missing any of those items, uh, 
they're going to be lacking hit. And Don Alejandro's money belt is not better than the uh, the bone weave girdle if the hunter needs hit. This is a, a better item. It has no stamina, but it is statted really well as long as you need the hit. So again, this belt, I really want to stress that this should be going to hunters. And they're going to potentially use this the entire tier. And this is going to be better than the listed belts in the best list in most cases for hunters again once you have literally every item in the game uh in the tier that has hit on it then sure you you can use the money belt but uh, and i want to be clear no one else really needs the money belt as a bis belt over hunters so it's not that hunters shouldn't get this belt it's just to make sure that your hunters are using this and this doesn't go off spec or get disenchanted or something because it's not on a bis list. This is an amazing belt for a hunter and they really should be using this in most situations uh, in tier six. So definitely a hunter belt right here. With that said, all of these classes can use it if they don't have Vash belt. Uh, it's pretty good for Ret, pretty good for Fury, pretty good for Enhance. But again, really best served on a hunter if they need to hit. Next, Crown of Empowered Fate. This is pretty much the same thing as Tear Helm for a Paladin. This helm is very, very uh, good. Not as good as Tear Helm. Again, set bonuses and all that considered. Uh, neck and neck with the helm if you were to ignore set bonuses. So this could hold over at HPAL for a while. Um, but yeah, not not Bis. Dreadbeard to the Legion. Bis for Warrior. Bis for both Fury and Arms. Uh, your Arms might need to hit. So pr definitely pry out to the arms if they need the hit. And then uh, and then Fury. Rhett can get it last. It's not listed as Bis for Rhett, but depending on their hit situation, they could use it to get in hit. But yeah, Rhett's uh, have 3% hit from Talons and probably don't need the hit. Prot Warriors can use this in some sets as well. So if no one needs this, can give this to a Prot Warrior. Onto the Translucent Spell Thread Necklace. So this is going to be a good neck for any caster that needs hit rating. Most casters don't. So boomies and ellies and mages are going to be using the necklace from uh, Kael'thas from the Verdant Sphere in most cases. Uh, this isn't as bad as it looks for a Shadow Priest. If you compare it to the neck that has 51 uh, Shadow Spell damage from Kara, uh, this neck is better than that one if Shadow Priests are able to take talents out of their hit uh, and put it into a different talent. So this necklace can enable your Shadow Priest to potentially move a talent point around, which can increase their damage. So just keep that in mind, but definitely Warlock first. A Boomy if they need the hit, then just check and see if your Shadow Priest would want this to move around some hit. And then, uh, generally speaking, Majors and Ellies should be happy with their neck from the Verdant Sphere. Um, so yeah. Onto the Pendant of the Titans. This is a Prot Warrior over Feral item. A uh, very good item for Prot Warrior. Prot Warriors, a lot of the times, will be using the Necklace from PvP, especially if they're a tank that's going for a lot of threat options. So um, it is definitely possible that a Prot Warriors get this drops and a Prot Warrior says, hey, I don't think I can use it. But Prot Warriors are also a class that mix and match their gear a tremendous amount. And there's definitely going to be some sets where they would use this. So I think... Uh, no matter what a prop warrior is going to want to have this as an option, but you could give the first to a feral, who again probably wouldn't even use it in every situation, but yeah, you could give it to a feral if it met their needs, but yeah, definitely a prop warrior neck first and foremost. But the presence of that PvP necklace uh, does mean that it's not always going to be on best list and it's not always going to be used. Next you have the Touch of Inspiration. This is uh, the second best offhand for healers. Uh, yeah. Give it to whoever needs the offhand. Uh, give it to whoever's not going to use a staff. Um, good offhand. Not as good as the one from Archimond, but second best. Next, we have the torch. Uh, the, this torch is going to be the Ret two-hander. Uh, it is better for Ret than the Archimond sword, so make sure that Rets are getting this one and Warriors are getting the Archimond sword. Cool item. Okay, then we have a healing uh, wand. Obviously, priest is the only one who can use it. Give it to your priest. Best in slot. Upgrade over the Morgrom wand. 
Alrighty, we're over to Terran Gorfiend. Oh boy, this is an interesting one. So this cloak is another complicated one because technically this is going to be good for a lot of classes. Really every class can use this cloak. Any class that needs hit would use this. If a rep paladin needed hit, they'd use this and it'd be the best option. If a hunter needed hit, that is a, a BM hunter, if a BM hunter needed hit, they'd use this, and it would uh, it would be the best choice if they needed the hit. Uh, a warrior would use this, and well, it is just bis for warrior outright. And an arms warrior, it's still bis for them, and especially bis if they need the hit, right? So it is good for every person here, which makes it a little complicated. But uh, there are several capes that are introduced in the next phase that are going to be alternatives. Uh, isn't this one, it's called like Dory or something. There's two different cloaks. There's one that has haste and one that has armor pen. This is the armor pen one that a lot of the classes are gonna use instead of the one we just mentioned. A lot of the classes that like to stack armor pen are gonna want this cloak. Um, so a lot of BIS lists that are looking forward to phase four use that cloak for warrior over uh over this cloak rets have a, a new haste cloak that comes out so of all these class and in feral dps cats a lot of times have too much hit from their gear so generally speaking in most situations the play is going to be and but again you could change this based on if there's someone in dire hit needs but generally rogan and Hans are the classes that will not replace this next phase no matter what doesn't nothing no conditionals no situation would a rogue or enhance ever take off this cloak in the next phase it is just bis for them whereas all of these other classes would not necessarily use it next phase when za comes out when the new badge items come out so rogue and enhance i'd say equal uh first and then all these other classes i would give the nod to arms because they might need the hit cool cowl of benevolence uh, this is an item that exists and is very close to the healing priest head for uh, compared to tier, but not this. Tier helm is better, and uh, although the set bonuses don't aren't great for priest, technically you wouldn't get the set bonuses either. This is another item though that could hold over the priest for a while because they'll be low on tier prio. Next we have the robe of the shadow council. This is a bad item. Give it to anyone who wants it. Cool. Insidious bands. So this is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. Um, based on hit situations, you could argue that this should go to a hunter first. And based on your guild, you could give this to a hunter first because they will uh, need hit on their wrists to match a bis list exactly. Coming in from tier five, they're gonna have some extra hit though, uh, and potentially wouldn't have a need for this. Basically the situation here is in a vacuum, rogue gains the most from this item and it's not close. This is actually a very, very big upgrade for a rogue. Uh, this item is insane for them. Uh, it's a much smaller upgrade for hunter and even survival, it's not a big upgrade. But again, considering certain hit situations, if it would be the difference between your, your hunter being hit capped or not, you could prio it to the hunter. All things considered, the hunters can just gem hit. Um, they can use agi and hit gems in some yellow sockets and everything will be fine. So that would be the counter argument to why a rogue, because it's only 12 hit rating, a couple gems and it's the same thing. So uh, all things considered, I think, I think it's fair to give this to a rogue. When it comes to wrists for a rogue, these are by far the best wrists for them. They can use the trash wrists, but the problem is when it comes to Hearts of Darkness, you're really not gonna be wanting to waste Hearts of Darkness on non-best in slot items. So your rogue is not going to be getting these wrists very quickly at all. Keep in mind that, uh, think of how many things are gonna be crafted before your rogue would get these wrists. You're going to, but they are technically BOE, so I guess they could go buy them. But within your guild, you're gonna make Shadow Resistance first, then you're gonna be making the clear best in slot items, a lot of bracers for different people. 
you're going to be making items that are best for your enhancement, like the shoulders and uh, the wrists. You're going to be making haste items to help out your druid to hit 113 haste. You're going to be making haste items for your priest because they're not going to be getting uh, tier for a while. Uh, you're going to be basically once you've made like all of these things all the way down the list Maybe then you'd think about making swift strike bracers as a temporary upgrade for a rogue But it would be like one of the last things you do. So all things considered. I think that um, I Think it should be rogue prio for the simple reason that it is a massive upgrade for rogue and Rogues just gain so many stats from the the wrist upgrade, but I definitely could see the case to potentially give it to a hunter as well. I'd give it to survival over BM for agility reasons. And uh, yeah, not best for enhanced, not best for warrior, but amazing upgrade for rogue, very good item. Next, the botanist gloves of growth. These are best for resto druid. Um, definitely give to resto druid before resto shaman, generally speaking, because even though they're best for resto shaman as well, they're best for both classes. The Resto Shaman has a male alternative that has the same amount of haste. Now, it doesn't have the sockets, so it's definitely a significantly better item for uh, both cla both classes, right? But remember, if, if you're going to say that Resto Shamans should get prior on haste items because they're a Resto Shaman and they really like haste, that wouldn't mean that the Botanist Gloves should go to them over the Druid and trump them because the male haste option they get it has the same amount of haste. It's just healing that you're missing out. So definitely give these to Resto Druid before Arsham. Uh, and your Resto Shaman does want these in the Arbis, but worst case scenario, they could use tier and get their set bonuses on earlier. Worst case scenario, the Resto Shaman can just hold out for those male gloves as well. So they have options. Druid doesn't. Druid before Shaman. Next, we have uh, the soft step boots of tracking. And by the way, these would be bis for a paladin in a output build that wants haste as well. But they'd be last. Uh, these boots are another underrated item. Uh, these are listed as best in slot for enhancement on some lists. Uh, there's a leather option that is also equally as good for enhance, but that has way more competition. Um, you're going to see... There's a lot of people that want the leather boots that are going to come from Shiraz, the next boss. So we'll see those in a second. Um, but yeah, enhancement are probably the best choice for this boot because uh, I think you're going to see a, a lot of this list citing these boots. They're basically neck and neck. Oh, I think I might have passed them. Yep, they're at the top. These are going to be listed as, as really good for enhance as well. But again, a lot of these classes don't want to use the male alternative and, and Enhance has the option to. So I think you should give these to Enhance and Enhance should just be content with these for the phase. Uh, definitely consider giving these to Hunters. Again, it's the same exact situation that I described with the belt. Looking at the Hunter gear, they're going to need hit if they're missing out on a lot of the hit items. If that is the case, make sure that you hook them up with these boots because these boots are very good for Hunter if they need hit. Uh, so definitely try and get them to a hunter. After that, like Rhett or Warrior could use them, especially if your Rhett needed the hit. A lot of times the Rhett don't need hit. But yeah, really really try and uh, you know enhance and then try and get this to your hunters and it should help their gear, uh, especially early on. Next, we have the Gauntlets of Enforcement. These are insane for Prot Warrior. No one else can really use them, but yeah, insane for Prot Warrior, huge upgrade, amazing item for them. Next, Holy Paladin. Uh, yeah, it's a haste belt. If you want to run a haste set as a paladin, it would be good. Yeah, give it to your holy paladin. Elemental Shaman. This is a totem, new totem for Ellie's. It is best in slot for them. So yeah, your Abyss Ellie totem. Obviously no competition there, but yeah, great for them. Soul Cleaver. Uh, can you try and give this to whoever? It's going to be a little tough to find a home for this item because compared to like tier 5 items, it's not not really better than any of them. You might be thinking, wow, this is like the same thing as the Archimon sword. Why wouldn't this be really good? Well, it's not a sword. So warriors um, want sword spec if they're playing two-handed arms. And they have Lionheart Executioner, and they have the Archimon sword to look at, and this is not a sword. Um, you could give this to an undergeared arms warrior, I guess. Most likely this is going to be given out to the raid for like a PvP item or something. 
when it comes to a rep paladin, uh, maybe a rep paladin would want this for PvP as well, but uh, rep paladins would don't stack armor pen, so this is not going to be as good for a rep. Next we have the Twisted Blades of Zarek. Uh, this is Warrior before Rogue. Um, all things considered, this is most likely going to be like a really nice item for a warrior, but uh, your warriors don't need this if they have the bow from Vash. It's just probably not that many guilds have a bunch of Vash bows on their warriors, so a nice warrior range weapon. You might be wondering why Rogue doesn't necessarily want this. There's just a lot of different items Rogues can get that have hit rating on them that would be better. And the Warriors really like the crit. The Rogues, you know, not as much. And yeah, Warriors would, Rogues would rather have the Steam Pistol from Alar. It's still Bistis phase. And even potentially could be using stuff like the Honor Hold Exalted Weapon or Prince Bow potentially over this. Next, we have the Rifle of the Stoic Guardian, uh, a mitigation prop warrior gun. Not much to say, not potentially a great item. Can use it as a mitigation option. Uh, could be good on something like Mother Shiraz, where uh, potentially dodging a cleave could be a big deal, saving you, especially uh, if you're the, a soaker. If you're on Mother Shiraz and you're just sitting there uh, eating cleaves, uh, it would be a good item there. All right, Mother Shiraz, we got the Leggings of Devastation. These are very... Uh, immediately when the phase flips over, these are going to be pretty good, but it's not going to be on any BIS list. Uh, they're very close to BIS for Shadow Priest, so I would definitely give these to Shadow Priest first as the contested item they want. A lot of people want the Channeled Elements legs. So yeah, make sure that these legs go to... Uh, of anyone, you know, maybe bias it towards Shadow Priest, but you could give this to anyone who's having some hit troubles. Most legs in the phase have hit on them, so you don't have to give this to someone solely based on the hit rating, because a lot of items here are going to have hit, but yeah, a decent item to be sure, uh, and Shadow Priest would use it the best. Next, the Shadow Master Boots. Now, these are boots that are actually can be used by any class listed here. They're Bis for Rogue, they're Bis for Feral Cat, they're Bis for Ret. They're BIS for BM, they're BIS for Survival, they're BIS for Bear in some setups, and they're BIS for Enhance. Technically, uh, most, most lists are probably going to have these listed, I suspect, as they're uh, probably going to be slightly better than the male ones I just we talked about on the last boss, but it's, it's a close, it's a close comparison, right? So let's talk about it. Um, I think that these boots are a great candidate to go to a survival hunter. The survival has a lot of hit from talents. It's very unlikely they're gonna need to hit. These have high agility. Cool, nice and easy, give it to survival, great item. After that, they are bis for BM and they are bis for ret. Both classes would not use them if they needed hit and were having trouble with hit. But on paper, both classes don't necessarily need the hit in their bis gear. So I would give it to hunter or ret after that. Uh, Feral Cat is in the mix as well. You could potentially give it to Feral Cat before these two classes as well if they exclusively play Cat, if they're a Cat-only player. If they happen to go into Bear a lot, a lot of Bear sets are not going to use this. Some can, but a lot of Bear sets are not going to use this. Bears are already going to get Trash Boots from the phase that are good for Bear and have a lot of armor. Uh, so... You could prio a feral cat before uh, these classes. If they only play cat, that, that would be okay. Uh, if, if your tank is your main tank and literally never enters cat, they probably should be last on this and would get the least utility out of this. And they could definitely flex this into some sets for some threat, but it's probably not necessary to give to them uh, as a option to wiggle around gear sometimes when so many classes want it. Uh, now Rogue. We, we've gotten all the way down to Rogue. Uh, these boots are near identical to boots that come from ZA. There are Zulaman boots, or, or I think they might be badge boots rather. Uh, either way, it's a phase four boots. I think they're from badges. But when phase four comes out, Rogues can get a different pair of boots that are very close to this. Um, depending on your gear situation, they can be better than these depending on how much hit your gear set currently has. If you're high on hit rating, Shadow Master boots are very slightly better. 
if you're low on hit rating, um, or not, you're never going to be low as a rogue, but if you don't have tons and tons of hit, the new phase four boots would actually be better. So for this reason, and you know, so far throughout the list, you've seen that rogues get a decent amount. You know, we, we had them first on wrists. They're getting a lot of nice items like the neck, the ring, they're getting tier. Um, you know, in your guild, they might be even up for glaives. So rogues get a decent amount here. I don't think it's necessary that they, they get these when they have a phase four option that is very close, if not better. Um, so, and all of these classes mentioned wouldn't want those boots that come from ZA. Enhancements also can use the boots from ZA as well, and they're pretty close to this. Um, not as good for them as Rogue, but yeah, pretty close. And, and like we mentioned, Enhance have options to get the other boots. So that is where I have things. Uh, definitely think if you just have like a pumper cat that like only plays cat, even though a lot of guilds don't have a cat that fills that role, uh, could definitely get them like after survival. But I think uh, you're mostly going to give these to hunters that don't need the hit and rets that don't need the hit. And then in theory, eventually, by the way, your your hunters and rets should get enough hit that these would be bis no matter what, right? Because they should be able to get the other items. Cool. Heart shatter breastplate, uh, temp upgrade maybe for a fury. A lot of hit rating on the item. For some reason, if you've got a class that just needs a ton of hit, hey, could give this to them. But yeah, not a great item. Maybe just a temp upgrade for someone like a Fury. Nadina's Pendant of Purity. This is an interesting item. So the haste neck, um, there is a haste necklace that comes from PvP. As of right now, people are not certain whether or not it will be in the game. It is on the PTR but we don't know if it is going to be in the game or not. If the haste healing neck is in the game, a lot of classes are going to use the haste neck. Uh, this is a safe bet to give to a paladin because it has crit on it and MP5. Definitely amazing in the build that goes for uh, a really high amount of sustain with the holy light build. If the haste neck is not on the PTR, both shamans and priests are going to want this. Uh, it's also good for a Rester Druid as well, but the crit is kind of wasted for them. So, yeah. This goes from being a, <laughs> like, one class wanting it, maybe, if the Haste Neck is on the PTR, to every class wanting it if it's not. And obviously, you're going to have some healers that don't get PvP and get a Haste Neck that are going to want this anyway. All right, Tome of the Lightbringer. Um, yeah, give it to your prop, Pally. Cool. Blade of Savagery. Uh, this should be Rogue Prio. This is the biggest upgrade for a Rogue from a single item in the phase, except for Glaives, uh, or a Glaive, basically. Uh, this is, you remember, if if you play a Rogue, you know this all too well, but um, for those of you that don't know Rogue as well, Rogue hasn't actually had an offhand from Raid the entire game. The, there was a reason why your Rogue was using Latro's Shifting Offsword, in phase one, they might even still be using it. Unless your rogue went and PVP'd for an offhand, um, your rogue has either been using a PVP offhand or Latros the entire game. So going from like that to Blade of Savagery, an item that is 1.4 speed, really fast, amazing stats, this is just the perfect rogue weapon. Uh, except Glaives, but <laughs> besides those, those are even more perfect. But yeah, this is a huge deal for a rogue. I would definitely give this to a rogue first, even if they were first on Glaives. And the reason is because Glaives obviously have a very low drop rate, and this is a huge upgrade, and your rogue has not had a good offhand for a very long time. The only class that can make a claim for this weapon is a human prot warrior, besides rogue, obviously. A human prot warrior is going to want this, and it is best in slot, but I do think that they should continue using their Mallet of the Tides or potentially use that mace that we talked about from Trash that has 1.5 speed as well. I think they should use that as a placeholder and definitely save this for a rogue. This is this is too good for a rogue. Uh, the fact that it's a sword it means that the rogue can't use the other options that a warrior could use. So definitely rogue first, then a human prop warrior. Um, Fury maybe has some use for this, although it's too fast. Hunter maybe could use this as a stat stick if they're behind on weapons. But yeah, really just rogue on this one, and then human prop warrior. Next, we have the Pauldrons of the Forgotten Conqueror. Uh, 
we're back to tier. We haven't talked about tier for all of Black Temple. I'll give a quick summary for those of you that didn't watch the Hydro video, but I'll try not to drag too long. Um, again, uh, with the the Paladin tier, we're going to be giving tier to prop Paladin very fast so they can get the Consecrate set bonus active. It's a huge boost for the entire raid that the 10% Consecrate damage is in effect and is drastically going to improve the speed at which you clear trash. After that, the Warlocks are going to get their tier because the four set is very powerful and the individual pieces are great. After that, um, Holy Paladins don't get as much gear, so they're going to be up next for their tier because they're getting passed over on a lot of the haste gear as well. And uh, their two set and their four set is both good. After that, it's going to be Holy Priest and Shadow Priest. Um, Holy Priest individually has uh, several pieces of tier that are good. And they would individually use, you know, a, a lot of the pieces. They would use head, shoulder, chest, and their gloves just individually for how good they are. But their four set and two set are both bad. Uh, meanwhile, the shadow priest, all of the pieces individually are bad except the chest. But you can use the four set and it is best in slot. So... That is how, that's a little summary for the tier. In this case, we're going to be following a conventional order because all of the shoulders are best in slot. Uh, Rhett being the class that doesn't get them because Rhett doesn't want their tier. Um, their chest is okay, but besides that, their tier is pretty bad. So that's just to recap um, the tier and then nothing unique with the shoulders here, wanting to follow the order to, to get those set bonuses online in the order that I explained. Next, uh, and again, the reason why shadow is last on the shoulder is individually the shoulder is not very good. Individually, this would not be something they'd even really want. They only want to get it to eventually get the four set. So that's why they're going to be very low on it. And also why shadow priests are going to be considered higher for a lot of things than you might expect relative to some of the other classes. You might be shocked with your jaw wide open if I ever mention a Shadow Priest might have some case to an item over a Warlock. Just remember, Warlocks are getting four pieces of tier right after the Paladin, and the Priest has to wait for everyone. So keep that in mind. Next, we've got the Shaman Warrior Hunter token. Um, to summarize again, for those of you that didn't watch the Hydel video, the Resto Shaman set is amazing for most guilds. Again, if you're in a guild that's going to be speedrunning, pushing logs really hard, really focusing on damage. Um, you don't need to focus on your, your healers gearing as much. But for the majority of guilds, I think that the Resto Shaman sets are very powerful and definitely are going to be great to get. So Resto Shaman set is going to be the priority, as well as the Ellie Shaman set being very, very good. After that, um, Hunters and Warriors are going to get their tier as well. You could, depending on your guild, definitely move up hunter over some of these classes um, because the hunter tier the four set is is good and individually several of the pieces are pretty big but unfortunately there are a couple pieces of Gron stalker that aren't too hot um, you know the legs and eh, are not that great uh, the chest is the chest is fine um, but it's really the shoulders and the gloves that are the exceptional pieces and while the head is better than previous phase the head is also not super amazing either so couple of reasons why um, you know Hunter wouldn't immediately jump out as being the first first. Uh, so if you did want to give some more items to Hunters, the shoulders are going to be one of the better pieces for them. Shoulders and gloves are very, very good. Uh, but I still have them behind uh, Arsham and Ellie so that they can complete their set bonuses uh, ahead of them. After that, it's going to be Fury, then Prot. Remember, if you're a Prot warrior, to take the damage option. The tank version here on the screen is bad. This is no good. This item is terrible. So make sure that your prot warrior, if you do give him a piece of tier, make sure he takes the fury version. The prot one is worse than tier five shoulders. So just make sure you do that. And then enhance is dead last. So there we go. Onward to pauldrons of the forgotten vanquisher. Uh, and I guess as some comments, I mentioned the, uh, I'll mention a few more things actually while we're here. So warriors, fury warriors are going to use the shoulders and the chest, even if they're not running set bonuses. These are individually best in slot for fury, even if they don't want the set. And arms has a slight nod over fury because they prefer the four set 
to uh, to offset pieces more than Fury does. And if you're wondering why Prot is so far down, it's because obviously the Prot shoulders are terrible. The the DPS version can be good for Prot, but the Tier Five shoulders are actually a very very good option. And um, there's no reason your Prot warrior would need these for progression. This is not like something that needs to be rushed for a Prot warrior. And in fact, a lot of Prot warriors will not even be able to use this item in their gear set as soon as they get it. It's gonna depend on the rest of their gear if they can even equip this. So that's why you might be surprised to see a tank tier low. That is why it is low, is, it, is they're gonna take the DPS option, they can't use it in every set, and it's not even a big upgrade necessarily over tier five shoulders. Tier five shoulders are good for warrior. All right, on to the last token. Um, summarizing the set bonuses again, bears have an insane two set and their four sets not bad for AOE. Uh, and even single target, to be fair. Uh, rogues really like both their two and their four set. Boomies are a fan of their set, but they kind of need to compile several of the pieces to get it going um, because they are going to currently have the tier five four set, which gives them starfire damage. So they're going to need to collect um, several pieces and then swap them out. Uh, fire mage, if you do have a fire mage in your guild, is going to want the individual pieces and the four set keep in mind the shoulders are uh, unfortunately have spell pen on them so they're one of the weaker options uh, unfortunately and then uh, resto and arcane arcane doesn't use the shoulders resto does use the shoulders but they don't use the set bonuses super well especially the four set so that is what's going on there uh, if you have a really good fire you can also potentially give them their four set a lot faster, uh, potentially ahead of a boomy as well. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but shoulders are not the most ideal item there. Cool, we're on to the council, guys. We're almost there, but don't worry. We're not even Illidan yet. We have another tough item. Uh, the Cloak of the Illidari Council. This item is very, very good. It is good for casters. If you... Ignore the Haste Cloak from Illidan, which has healing on it, and a lot of healers are going to be getting first. So if you just pretend that doesn't exist, this is going to be the best cloak for every caster but Shadow Priest. Uh, technically, Warlocks have a better cloak, but some of their gear sets aren't going to work for it. Uh, with that said, Mages, Ellies, and Boomies are all going to really like this, this cloak, and if you happen to have a Fire Mage as well, they could use it. Um, yeah. There's not really anything super specific that you can point to as to why a certain class should get this over another. It doesn't really have enough intellect that you would say a mage really should be biased towards it. It doesn't really have enough of anything that would point you in one direction. You can definitely give this as mage prio considering they're getting less tier than everyone else and that Ellie's and Boomies are getting their tier both fairly fast-ish um, so yeah, you can definitely give this to Mage first for that reason. Uh, individually though, it's just a great item for each of the three. The reason I would give it to them before Warlock is because Warlocks can get the uh, Hit Cloak from Trash, and it is a very good cloak, especially if they can fit it into their build. It has, you know, so much Shadow Spell damage, great cloak. So if they can get the, the, the Trash Cloak, uh, that, would be, that would be ideal and let other people get the Illidari Council Cloak. Shadow Priests definitely want that hit cloak that I just mentioned that has shadow spell damage, so they're dead last. Uh, but yeah, definitely, you're really going to hope in your guild that a lot of these drop, because if not, your, uh, your casters are going to be antsy to try and get the Illidan Healing Cloak. On to Belt of Divine Guidance. This is a very nice belt. Um, priests want to use haste belt in most bis lists but if you were a priest that was looking to maybe increase your sustain feel like you're running out of mana this is the best item for a priest that has like spirit int you know no haste basically the best non-haste belt for a priest and then uh this is best in slot for a druid this is the best belt for a druid but many druid sets are going to use the belt and in fact, a lot of the best setups are going to use the belt. So to say it's best in slot for a druid is not necessarily maybe fair to say. It is the best non-haste belt for a druid, the best non-haste belt for a priest. Um, 
priests pretty much always want a haste belt. Druids most of the time will use the haste belt. So long story short, roundabout way of saying, even though this is cloth, uh, you probably can give this to a druid before a priest, especially if your priest wants the haste belt. But if your priest does not want the haste belt, you could you could give it to priest first. Uh, then we have the Veil of Turning Leaves. Uh, give this to whoever you want. Um, it has It's a Resto Druid item. It's not very good. It's pretty bad. It's a shoulder. And it looks like a helmet, but it's a shoulder. And it's not very good. Forest Prowler's Helm. Uh, this is an item that is going to be second bis for several classes. Um, I listed Hunter. This is going to be BM Hunter, second bis. Survival hunters are going to want to use the helmet. Um, Rep paladins, this is second bis for them if they don't have cursed vision of Sargeras. And enhancements also would be interested in this helmet if they didn't have cursed vision of Sargeras. But the reason I list enhancement last is because when we get to cursed vision of Sargeras, it is going to be enhancement prior. So, yeah, there you go. Hunter equal to Rep. Just give it to whoever looks like they're not getting Cursed Vision first. Next, we have Helm of the Illidari Shatterer. Helm of the Illidari Shatterer is a really good item coming from Tier 5, but not going to be on any BIS list. It has a lot of hit rating on it. If you have a Fury that's going for the offset items that's trying to hold out for Cursed Vision, can give this to them. Um, can give it to an arms that needs hit, but eventually they're going to replace it with, with the tier helm if they're going for the four set. And uh, yeah, a ret can use this if they need the hit, but a lot of times it's just too much hit because they're playing ret and they have 3% hit from talents. So just try and find the best home for this. This is one of those items that is not going to be bis for anyone, but is it is a good item. So you should, you should try and find a home for this because... Uh, if you were sitting on this for months as a, a DPS warrior, it certainly would, would do the job. It's a very good item. Next, we have Madness of the Betrayer. Um, oh, and by the way, this is second bis for a Fury Warrior if they don't have the Cursed Vision and they're going for the offset. So keep that in mind. And there's the good old Cursed Vision. Back to Madness of the Betrayer. Oh, we. This is an interesting case. So for those of you that have not been following the ongoing saga with Mod Madness of the Betrayer, um, it hit the PTR and it turns out that it does not have an internal cooldown. What that means is the uptime for this is significantly higher than what people thought it would be. Um, no internal cooldown, what that means is that that proc at the bottom that says equip your melee and ranged attacks have a chance to allow you to ignore armor. Uh, that effect is going to allow you to, it can proc while it's up and like refresh the duration. So the uptime could potentially be extremely high. And if that's the case and you're ignoring 300 armor a lot of the time, this is a very, very powerful trinket. In terms of what classes benefit the most from this item, it obviously has armor penetration on it. How armor pre penetration works is the more armor penetration you have, the better armor penetration gets. So you want to be giving this to a class that is stacking armor pen. If you give this to a class like a ret or a rogue, it would be a little bit silly because those classes do not have very much armor pen. Likewise, a feral would not get as much armor pen. They're going to get the least out of this item. Also keep in mind that classes like rogue have other trinkets that are very powerful that they can use instead that are at the very least going to be close to as good as madness if madness ends up being super busted because of the no internal cooldown. Um, but if Madness is about as good as people had thought previously, Rogue wouldn't even want it at all. So Rogue is at the bottom. And Rhett really shouldn't get this. Rhett uh, has even other options in Zulaman. There's a trinket in Zulaman that gives attack power as well. Likewise, Enhancement Shamans, while this is likely going to be good for them, they don't gear very much uh, armor pen, especially in the current phase. So uh, would be a little bit reduced value for them. We can also look to the hit rating on the item. Um, because this item has 20 hit rating, that'd be a reason like a survival hunter would not like the hit as much as a BM. 
Keep in mind the armor pen doesn't help a pet, so if you do happen to have a really good survival that wants this, it, they would still use this a decent, uh, they would use it decently, because a big difference between survival and BM is how much damage their pet does, and uh, survivals are gonna gain technically more from the armor pen than the BM, but BMs do more damage. And when I was checking some logs and doing some napkin math about it, it seemed like the armor pen effect was about equal between survival and BM. Survival doing a higher percentage of their care of the damage from their character, but BM just doing more overall. So madness would be kind of a tie for them, except the hit rating is going to be better for BM. Now, the reason why Fury and Arms is higher than BM and Survival is they are the class that gets the most armor penetration. They are the class that is going to do really well with the armor pen. Uh, effects like armor pen are always great on trash as well. Furies and arms do a lot of trash damage and they go through, you know, slaughtering things. So I think that, uh, I think the warriors are the best candidate for this trinket. Now you might be saying, you know, if you're a hunter and you're freaking out, just, um, you know, as a reassurance, right? There's also the item called Cursed Vision of Sargeras, which is also an item that is contested between both warriors and hunters. And I think that it would make more sense to give hunters Cursed Vision and warriors Madness than the alternative, right? Because again, warriors have access to Illidari Shatter, warriors have the option to go for the Tear Helm and the Four Set, and uh, hunters could too, but it's kind of hard to because their legs are so contested. So, Virian Arms, Pryode on Madness. Um, I don't think there's a real reason to decide between Furian Arms based on a spec. Who should get it? I think it's more important to look at the players that you have. Arms can definitely do some insane trash damage, and Arms can definitely pump. Um, but Furies definitely in general do more damage. So yeah, just, just make the decision based on your guild of who you think would be a good candidate. But this is a great item to give to a, a warrior and let them go crazy. Um, yeah, there you have it. That is madness. Next, we have Leggings of the Forgotten Conqueror. Leggings of the Forgotten Conqueror, you know, again, back to tier. I'm not gonna keep going through the set bonuses because we just covered them on the last boss. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the individual items if there's reason for outlier. Uh, on this token, there's no real outlier in terms of an item. Um, Holy Priests, do not use their healing legs in bis, um, but neither do shadow priests. So you definitely, it doesn't really matter here. This should probably be an equal sign. Holy priest equals priest. Um, neither class uses the legs in bis. They're both not good for either. I Well, the, the holy priest at least would probably gain stats if they don't have the bis option. The shadow priest could maybe get their four set on earlier. So it doesn't super matter who gets this one because it's not bis for either. Uh, also not bis for ret. So um, bis for prot, lock, and age pal, not bis for holy priest and spreeze. Could potentially be used by a spreeze to get their four set earlier. Could be used by a holy priest if they don't have the bis legs yet from Hygel. On to the next uh, token. Um, rest of Shaman, BM. Now, uh, you're going to note that we don't have survival listed very high. Survival hunters want to use the offset legs. Just remember that. So if you're giving these out, make sure we're not giving these to, to BM. Or we're giving them to BM, not to survival. Uh, so rest of Shamans, the legs are abyss for them. Um, BM hunters, they are abyss. Not a individually amazing item. You can see it has MP5 on it as well, but definitely an important part of their set bonus. Uh, you're going to see Prot Warrior here. Prot Warrior, this is the only piece of tier they're going to basically not be getting last. Hooray for Prot Warriors. This is definitely the best piece of tier for a Prot Warrior, and it's actually a pretty good item. Uh, again, you could, I guess, give this first to the Prot Warrior if they just are really antsy and like really want an item and feel bad they're not getting any gear, I guess. Uh, Prots do get a lot of uncontested items, though, so... I think a prod's fine waiting for this. It's not that great for them. I mean, it's it's certainly an upgrade, and it's better than tier five pants, uh, for sure. They get a nice little chunk of stamina, but it's not something world breaking, in my opinion. But a nice upgrade for them. They definitely should get it before all of these classes, because it's not. This is not a bis item, right? Uh, enhancements don't use their legs. Ellies don't use their legs. They use offset legs. Um, 
arms in Fury Warriors do not use legs, they use the plate ones. At your discretion, you can decide who should get the legs, I guess. If you have a bunch of the BIS offset legs dropping for Warriors, um, can give Ellie's their legs first. If not, you can give Warriors their legs if they're not able to get the offset stuff to drop. The Divine Retribution legs, that is. So yeah, that is the order for the legs. Next, we have Feral Rogue Mage Boomy Druid. Again, nothing new there based on set bonuses. You're going to see Mage is going to be moving up here and Boomy's moving back. These legs are not best in slot for a Boomy. Uh, these, these legs are also not best in slot for a Resto Druid. So Mage definitely should be third behind Rogue and Feral. And individually, a Mage will use these as an Arcane Mage. This is the offset they're most likely to use. They also could use the gloves if they have a precarious hit situation, but most of the time uh, you're going to see Bisless showing the legs and, and Arcane Mages should be getting these legs before these other classes. So that is it for Mother Shiraz. And now the fun, or sorry, this was Illidari Council. Now it's time for Illidan himself. Oh boy, is there a lot of interesting items on Illidan. This is going to be fun. First up, the Healing Cloak. Healing Cloak, the Shroud of the Highborn. This increases healing done by up to 68, damage done by 23. The reason I read that entire text is because this is technically best in slot for both healers and casters, and they both want the haste, and this is clearly a much better item for a healer than a caster but many guilds are going to be focusing on their DPS rather than their healers. If you were in a guild that is pushing for speed running and really pushing logs really hard, this is probably going to end up going to casters first, but in the overwhelming majority of guilds, this is significantly better for a healer. This is one of the biggest upgrades for a healer in the tier, and it's kind of silly in my opinion to give this to a caster over a healer in most guilds. Again, if you're speedrunning or you're pushing logs, that's one thing. But in a your 95% of guilds, right? 98% of guilds, you know, whatever percentage you want to pick. In the overwhelming majority of guilds, um, this should go to healers. This is best in slot for healers the entire game. There's not really a alternative that's that close for them. Um, Funnily enough, the, the 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 cloak that they could use from Sunwell that's like closest to this uh, is the caster version that has haste. Uh, in Sunwell, you could give a caster cloak to healers, and it would be equivalent to this. But obviously, you're not going to do that. So, uh, yeah, this is best in slot for healers the entire game. This should go to healers. Uh, there is a cloak from ZA Trash that casters can use. Um, maybe I should pull that up now and don't worry. Don't worry too much about this. These are some rough, rough stat weights for approximation. So don't freak out over the list. This is just the fastest way I could pull it up. And then we go to phase four. The cloak called the shadow caster drape is certainly worse than highborn. But if I pull this up, you're going to see that Compared to the Highborn, again, Highborn is 32 haste, 23 spell damage. And the Zulaman Cloak is 25 haste, so 7 less haste, 4 more spell damage. That is not a big difference. 7 haste for 4 spell damage is not the worst. I understand that this is still better, but it's not the worst. So next phase, there's a Cloak that can hold over the casters. This phase, um, you know, this cloak is going to go to some of the casters and your warlocks, and your shadow priests can be uh, happy with nether void cloak. So that is that is the deal there. Now the counter argument in favor of casters is that haste, especially for warlocks is going to really increase the damage of their Seed of Corruption and really increase trash. That is why speedrunning guilds will a lot of times give this to something like a Warlock. If you are going to give this cloak to a caster, I think Warlock would be the best candidate because 
they are going to um, be able to really increase the speed at which you clear trash. After that, it's not super important between Boomkin and Ellie and Mage who would get this. If you get this many cloaks, honestly, the main thing to think about would be which cloak they're not getting. So if you're giving the crit cloak to mages, um, then they probably should be last on this one, and so on and so forth. Cool. Uh, if you're looking at it, the shadow caster drape does have a little less intellect. So if you're looking at this as the other option, it's, it doesn't really point to a specific class that that cloak would be best for. Cool. In terms of which healers should get the cloak, this is. Uh, if you want, you know, remember the very beginning of the video, we gave the haste ring to priest before shaman because priests get less early. And now we're giving the shaman the haste cloak because they got more early, but they're not going to be higher than the priest on the mace, generally speaking. So just to be clear, that is, I think, a good strategy to distribute the items, but you have to look at your individual players. If your priest has KT cloak, um, which a lot of your priests will, it's another little reason that the shaman would potentially gain more from this item because that the KT cloak's really good. Uh, all things considered, you know, I would lean towards something like this. But remember, uh, if you are changing things up in other places, this could easily be an equal sign. You can give this to priest or shaman, whoever's deserving. You could have given the ring to priest or shaman. Uh, if you end up giving the mace to a shaman, because your your best healer is a shaman, then maybe you should be giving the cloak to a priest just to try and spread things out. But yeah, definitely shaman before priest. Resto Druid, I do not have as getting the cloak. I think that the cloak is the most premium haste option, and while I think they should still get it before DPS, uh, the Resto Druid does not need to get the cloak to hit 113 haste and they probably should be getting it from other places. And once they are at 113 haste, it's a bigger upgrade for these classes. So one of these healers, then Druid. H-Pal if they want it. Um, if the H-Pal doesn't want it, just go straight to casters. I think it's probably a fair bet to do that. I do think your H-Pal might be a little sad if they just get skipped straight over to casters over this cloak. Although that probably is the best thing to do, objectively speaking. Um, if your Holy Paladin's playing the Holy Light build, and they might not even want this, but I feel like most Paladins would still want this for different sets or to try stuff out. So that is it for the cloak. Again, if you're a hardcore guild, a really intense speedrunning guild, can give it to the Warlocks and stuff first, but if you're trying to, to get the most from the item, the Resto Shaman, the Priest is going to gain the most. Cool. Onto the Cal of the Illidari Lord. This is not best in slot for any class. Um, I do think this is a good item for a Fire Mage to rock, and then they can run four set tier. Um, I think that's a good option for them. A Warlock with no vestments could run this. It's unlikely that a Warlock is going to want to do this because the tier helm gives them wings. So good luck uh, convincing a Warlock that they are going to be running tier six and not getting the cool wing effect because it comes from the tier helm. So uh, you could give this to a warlock with no vestments or a fire mage. You could give this as a temp upgrade for a boomy or an Ellie. It's not technically bis for anyone though. Uh, and for fire, it's like pretty much bis, but they could also run the legs as an off piece. It's just the legs are more contested. So, so you could argue maybe it's bis for fire as the only actual bis. Cool, Cursed Vision, another fun item to talk about. This item is best in slot for every physical DPS, except for a Feral Druid, because they still use Wolf's Head Helm. Uh, very, very big upgrade. Every person who gets this item is going to be getting a very large upgrade. Uh, even someone like a Rogue would get a very large upgrade to equip this item over Tier 5. But even if you compare it to tier six, this is a big upgrade for every one of these classes over the tier helm, even rogue. And I know a lot of people talk about rogue like this item's, you know, oh, it's just not very good for a rogue. That's not true. It is very good for a rogue. Going from tier six helm to the cursed division is almost as big as an upgrade as most of the items they get, like from Illidan Ring. And uh, so it is, it is very good for all of these classes. It's just that... Rogues have good tier, 
rogues like their tier bonuses and rogues can get a tier helm really easily. By comparison, rets are on a very contested tier token and they are not going to be getting their helm nearly as fast. So for that reason, you're going to see uh, higher prio for these classes. Hunter and Fury, I think Furies definitely use this helm very well, but Furies mm -hmm. do have the option to run the four set. They do have the helm of the Illidari Shatter, and they are getting prio on Madness. The reason I didn't list arms here is because arms right now looks like they want to run their four set. Uh, that's why they're not listed here. All things considered, enhancements have a very contested token and their tier is terrible. So enhancement would make the most sense to get this item first. If you run the numbers, enhancement gains the most. By a pretty large margin, enhancement gains the most stats from this item and enhancement shamans are the best candidate to get the item. I think that giving this to enhancement first is probably the easiest, so long as you're not like solely just thinking about who in the raid does the most damage. Purely from a class point of view, purely from a spec point of view, enhancement gains the most. Enhancement should be first. Then hunter and ret. Now both the hunter and the ret can use the hit from cursed vision and it can help their gearing. Both of these classes will be fine if they don't get the 21 hit, but it does help their gearing. Uh, whereas a Fury is much less likely to care. Uh, and Rogue, again, being towards the back because they're going to be getting their tier helm so fast. And most of the classes here getting this helmet are not going to have tier helm when they get it, especially one of the early ones, just considering how much competition some of these items have. Like take a Ret, right? A rep paladin is going to wait behind the prot. They're going to be waiting behind the warlocks. Depending, you could have three, you could have four. Some guilds are on five, six, whatever. You're going to be waiting behind all of the warlocks. You're going to be waiting behind all of the holy priests, if you have one or two or three even. Um, and you're going to be waiting behind the shadow priest. That is so many people to wait behind, right? Compared to the rogue who's getting their tier helm second. And that's really why Rogue is going to have to be at the bottom. Now, I want to be clear that this is a very cool item as well. And it's important not to get lost in the numbers and the, the nerd theory crafting, right? This is a very cool item. And there's going to be some people in your guild that just want this item because it looks cool. And they think that it's stylish and all that, right? So there's definitely no shame in giving it to any of these classes. If for some reason someone really wants it more than others and they're a, a worthy player... And, you know, maybe that would mean they're lower on other items, right? Really can go to any of these classes here, but if you're trying to optimize the item, get the most out of it. Enhancement first, then Hunter or Aret, um, whoever's better, and then Fury, then Rogue, then Arms. Cool. That's Cursed Vision for you. And again, in your guild, if you've got an insane Hunter that really wants this, and your enhancement's not very good... There's no shame in giving it to, to them first. It's just on paper enhancement gains the most. All right, face plate of the impenetrable. Um, this is going to show up in some bis list for prop pally and some bis list for prop warrior. I would say most bis lists for prop warrior are going to use this. I would say most lists for prop pally are not. A lot of the prop pally bis lists are going to use the tier helm because it's going to have more threat. The prop pallies are likely to get a tier helm really fast because they're trying to get their four set. Meanwhile, the prot warrior, when this drops, probably isn't going to have a tier helm. So I think this should pretty clearly go to the prot warrior because, you know, if this drops week three, week four, week six, week, the warrior very likely does not have a tier helm. And the paladin will. So, yeah, seems pretty easy there. Next, we have the Storm Rage Signet. Um, this is a really good item for a lot of classes. This is technically BIS for every physical DPS. However, there is a massive disparity between some of these classes. Rogue and Enhancement want this item way more than everyone else. The difference between a Rogue and an Enhancement, like let's, let's take Band of the Ranger General. 
if you were using Band of the Ranger General as an arms warrior and you replace it with Storm Rage, it's it's a pretty small upgrade. It's not even it's not very big. I think there's a there's a spreadsheet as well that maybe I'll remember to link. Um, but definitely you can look around some of the class discords for this as well. There's a spreadsheet that did a little comparison of the items as well. And uh, yeah, it, you know, I believe Fury was either Fury or Arms was like, actually Hunter was like a six DPS increase. And Rogue and Shaman was like three, four, five times higher. A much bigger upgrade. Uh, if you look at the item in his hit rating, uh, if we talk about Sunwell, this item is best in slot in Sunwell for Rogan Enhanced. This is definitely a Rogan Enhancement item, uh, 100%. Now, the Rogue would gain a little more from the Armor Pen than the Enhancement. Um, the Rogue, it's a little bigger upgrade for them than the Enhance. Enhance has a few more rings in this phase that they can get that the Rogue doesn't want, like the Haste Ring and the Strength Ring. So all things considered, I say Rogue before Enhance, but both are worthy candidates. Both should be Priode for the ring. From this point on, these are classes that are less worthy. Now I put arms at the top of the list. Uh, arms warriors are apparently in some pretty bad hit situations in Sunwell. This is information that has been told to me by uh, Lemonism. Thanks for the help in some of the, the making of this list. He's You might recognize him from the arms warrior discord, but uh, the hit situation is supposedly very bad for arms in Sunwell and a lot of their gear doesn't have hit. So this could be a very big deal for in arms in Sunwell. Um, depending on their hit situation, this could be something that would be good to get to an arms warrior. Obviously in current phase, hope they can most of the time make a set that would make the hit rating work uh, without going over. Fury warriors, hunters, ferals, these are all classes that do not need this ring. They technically would want it in a best in slot setup, but they do not need this ring. Um, once you get to this point, once these classes have it, can give to biggest upgrade, can give to whoever randomly wants it the most. Uh, hunters on paper gain very little from this ring. Uh, ferals don't even need the hit from the ring in a lot of sets, uh, whether they're cat a lot of cat sets would use this. Uh, a lot of bear sets would use this for like threat, but they don't need this, right? Um, and Furies would gain just, it doesn't really change anything about their gearing. They just, they just gain a DPS increase, right? Uh, so not super important. I think once you get down here, who gets it, but definitely up here. Now, Prot Warriors, this is also going to be on a lot of Prot Warrior bis lists. Prot Warrior should not get this. Prot Warrior should get the ring from Supremus that has stamina, defense, hit, and be content with that. Cool. Rhett is dead last because Rhett Paladins are not in need of the hit. 30 hit rating on the item. They have 3% hit from talents. That's, yeah, they don't need it. Cool. On to Skull of Gul'dan, another contested item. Okay, where do we begin in School of Gul'dan? This item has hit rating on it. And if we start there, this is obviously a trinket. It's very powerful. This is a big deal. I think this is probably one of the best items in the phase. I personally, in my own opinion, think this item um, is more important than a lot of the weapons here. And I think that Skull of Gul'dan is, is very, 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 very powerful. And the on-use haste increase is insane. When it comes to Skull of Gul'dan, the item's got hit rating. It's got flat spell damage. The hit rating alone is going to be wasted on Elemental, Arcane, and Shadow Priest. That alone... And, and, and Boomy, honestly, in a lot of sets, will have too much hit with this item. That alone means that Warlock, by default, before we look at the active, just from the passive stats, would be the class that benefits the most from the item. Now let's look at the active. Tap into the power of the skull, increasing spell haste, right? 
I think that in a vacuum, you know, obviously haste is good for a lot of classes, but I think like take take the majority of guilds. Not every single guild is going to have mages with infinite mana. Sometimes they're going to run out of mana because your kill times are too slow. Sometimes they're casting frost bolts and stuff. If you're giving haste to mages, while it is going to be best in slot on a spreadsheet, for some guilds, it is not the play. Another reason why arcane mage should not be on the same level as a warlock is that in an arcane mage has an ability called icy veins and bloodlust exists. If an arcane mage is bloodlusted at the start of the fight, one of two things is going to happen. They either have to delay their Skull of Gul'dan, or they have to delay their Icy Veins. And in some setups, they delay both till after Lust ends. Not pressing your cooldowns immediately is not generally something that is good. As an Arcane Mage, there are 100% going to be situations where you cannot use your cooldowns when you'd want to because you will get too much haste. Arcane Mages hit the haste cap. If an Arcane Mage gets lusted, presses Skull, and presses Icy Veins, they have too much haste. Their Arcane Blast hits the haste cap. Considering that their cast is faster than everyone else here and none of these classes can hit a haste cap, right? That is a, re a knock against Arcane. However, arcane mages do a ton of damage and are extremely powerful. So I also don't think that you can really say that like a boomkin should get skull before arcane because arcane does way more damage. But they also have some anti-synergy, I would say, with skull of Gul'dan's active in that, again, it might delay their cooldowns. And if... And just to be clear, I understand that this is best in slot for an Arcane Mage. And I know that even though you might have to delay using Skull till after Lust, it would still be the best trinket. If you compare it to a Warlock, the Warlock does not have to delay the trinket. The Warlock is going to press it during Lust. And it's not they're not going to have to wait 20 seconds for Icy Veins to end or 40 seconds for Lust to end to use the trinket. Which means that they're just going to get more usages out of it. If you have a fight that lasts 2 minutes and 20 seconds, the Warlock is using Skull of Gul'dan twice every time. Every time the fight lasts 2 minutes and 20 seconds, the Warlock is getting Skull of Gul'dan uh, used twice. The Arcane Mage might miss, might only get one activation. If, you, if they only get one activation and the Warlock gets two, that is huge difference between the power of the item for the two classes. And that's just, again, the Arcane Mage just has issues being able to use it off cooldown because they hit Haste Cap with Lust and Icy Veins in addition to the Skull. So, in summary, Warlock is clearly the best class for this item because not only will this increase their damage on Trash because they can spam Seed, whereas a Boomy and an Ellie on trash, it's not like they're going to carry trash with haste. They're still going to hit, you know, they're, they're not going to change much on trash with haste. Uh, whereas a warlock could carry trash. Um, they're also the class that will never run out of mana. And I know this does not matter. At a high, high level, this does not matter. But 1 million percent, there are guilds out there that your boomy is going to run out of mana you know, your Arcane can run out of mana. Your Warlock will never run out of mana no matter what because they can tap. The haste is never going to cause them any trouble as a Warlock. There's no there's no situation where the haste could be a downfall for their class. Um, whereas the other classes could potentially run out of mana. Again, Elemental Shaman wastes the hit. Um, Elemental Shaman also doesn't do as much damage as a lot of these classes. I think Shadow Priest is easily the least prio class here because Shadow Priests have very specific interactions with haste and their haste they have they have haste breakpoints 
and I think it's going to be hard to gear around the skull of Gul'dan, like, making the most of it. And if they get lost, it, depending on the situation, uh, might not actually be... It's always going to be good, right? And the Shadow Priest pressing skull would always gain damage and stuff. But I think they clearly gain the least of all of these classes because they're going to... Uh, they have a weird interaction with haste and how it affects their mind flay, clipping, and, and everything. It's just it's just weird. So, okay. That's Skull of Gul'dan. Skull of Gul'dan is another item that you should be giving to your really good players. If you've got an insane arcane mage, you know, while it is best for a warlock, it, it wouldn't be the end of the world to give, like, one arcane mage, mix in him with a skull in with the warlocks, if he's just nuts and he carries the raid, for sure. Um, but on paper, definitely the best for a warlock. And after that, it's pretty close, right? With arcane being the best uh, DPS, but the other class is potentially not having as much issues with the haste hitting haste cap. So it kind of kind of goes back and forth there. I think in most guilds you're going to see it going to warlock than mage, but you got to make sure you give it to a mage that that knows how to use it and is going to you know, use their cooldowns at the right time and everything like that. Cool. Memento of Tarand. Hmm. This is a weird item. This is very dependent on your guild as well. This item is not that good. It's going to be on some bis list, but this item is not that good. Compared to everything else that we've talked about, like, it's night and day. Skull of Gul'dan versus Memento is like, it's not even, this item is not that good. It, it's going to be on some bis lists. It is an item that is good. There's going to be a lot of healers that are lazy that are going to want this. Because if you're a healer that doesn't use active trinkets, this is a nice upgrade. If you're a, tr a healer that is using active trinkets off cooldown and getting the most out of them, uh, or, or saving the active trinkets for moments where you feel like you need to use you need to push out as much healing as possible the active trinkets are actually better than memento of tarand unless you're running out of mana so for a class like a resto druid that generally speaking isn't going to run out of mana they are going to be gaining more from active trinkets using the hops and using the essence of the martyr they're just going to gain more healing over a long fight than this Priests, if you're looking to a a mana saving trinket, they can use Eye of Gruel. Eye of Gruel allows their procs off their circle of healing and has a really good interaction with priest. So on paper, if priest is looking for a trinket that is going to save them mana, um, something like Eye of Gruel would probably just make more sense for their class. But really speaking to Memento of Tarand, I would I would be fine giving it to a priest if that is the person in your raid that's running out of mana. I think Memento should be going to your healer that runs out of mana. Uh, because, you know, they're the ones that need the mana effect. And really the mana effect is what separates this from other items. Because the healing part, you're just going to get more healing using active trinkets over the course of a long fight, even. The active trinkets average out to more healing. With that said, again, you might see H Pal at the front and be a little confused. In theory, Holy Paladins would be someone that might be interested in this because they're going to be mashing Holy Light the entire fight and more regen is going to help them stay in the fight longer. Now, in the Holy Paladin Discord, there's some wacky trinkets that you can use instead to generate mana. There's a Shade of Iran intellect trinket that they can use. There's the Alchemist Stone. There's lots of wacky trinkets that can be used to, to, to save mana. Um, but this is a good one that has a lot of healing and gets you mana back. And remember that Holy Paladins don't get very much. Of all the healers, basically every item we've looked at has been Holy Paladin last. And that sucks. But that's just been the case. So of all the items, Holy Paladin has been last on like everything. If your Holy Paladin does want this, I think it's fine to give it to them. Resto Shamans are the class that would run out of mana the most. Resto Shamans are going to get a bunch of haste this phase. 
And so in theory, they will be not only running out of mana, but proccing this a decent amount. This is a great item for Resto Shaman. However, Resto Shamans already get a ton of gear. Um, so it's kind of hard to put them first on this, considering they get like everything they want, pretty much. Resto Druids just don't need the mana in a lot of cases. Now, if your Resto Druid's having mana issues because he's getting more haste and he's casting a lot more spells, then that's one thing. But really with Memento, I don't think this is as big of a deal. Try and get this to a caster that's having mana issues. Give it to your healer who runs out of mana. Give it to your healer that missed out on Brewfest hops. If you have a healer that didn't get Brewfest hops because they weren't playing during the Corin Dire Brew event, uh, this would be a bigger upgrade for them than other people. But yeah, not as big a deal of an item. Next, Shard of Azanoth. This item's uh, an item that you most likely are going to be very disappointed to see drop from Illidan. It is a cool item, I guess, in theory for like a rogue for PvP or messing around or something. But yeah, again, for PvE, rogues are using swords and uh, in 99% of cases. And unfortunately, this is just not an item that has a lot of usage in PvE. Next, the Crystal Spire of Karabor. This item is the best healing weapon in the game. It's best for every healer. However, if you look at the healing, it's not that high. Uh, it's really not. If we were to compare this to, you know, the third boss, we now know it's the third boss. The, the third boss in Hyjal that drops the healing weapon. This has 440 healing. And this one has 480, right? So it's a difference of 40 healing. Uh, Vash Mace is going to be a similar comparison. 40 healing sounds like a lot. It kind of is. You know, if you're something like a Paladin, you'd prefer the crit to the MP5 on this. So that kind of cuts into it. This item has less intellect than some of the alternatives. You know, so there's some factors here, but the main thing you need to look at on this item is the bottom text. That's the important part. That's the important part of this item. I do not think that you should ever make any decision regarding this mace based on anything but the bottom text. Because even if you're a healer, like let's say you have a healer that doesn't have a good healing weapon yet, you don't just give this to them because there's two healing staffs that drop in this phase. A healing one-hander and you can still get the mace from Vash if you're still doing Vash. So this really should be given to a healer that will make the most of that bottom line of text. If your target is below 50% health, your direct healing spells will cause your target to be healed for an additional 180 to 220 health. So let's talk about each healer. Let's start with the easy ones. This is not good for Resto Druid. The reason this is not good for, again, the effect at the bottom is not good for Resto Druid. The item in a, in a vacuum is abyss for Resto Druid because it has the most healing. But individually, just the equip effect is not good for Resto Druid. A lot of your hots, are, all of your hots are not considered direct heals as they're ticking on the target. And it just doesn't fit what a Resto Druid does. It, the effect is, is wasted on a Resto Druid. Then we go to H Pal. In theory, your H Pal should be casting Holy Lights on the tank. If your H Pal is casting Holy Lights on the tank, number one, the tank shouldn't be below 50% health, ideally. So this shouldn't even proc. If, you're, if your healer, the better your healer is, the less this effect should be used. Which is like never where you want to be. If you're giving this to a Holy Paladin first, it's like really weird because like the better he gets, the, the worse the item is. And that's like. That'd be really, yeah, that'd be not good, right? He should be keeping your tank high health. Now consider, okay, you might be like, okay, but yeah, but then it could save like the tank's life with like a big holy light or something. Well, even if your tank is below 50% health, why would 200 health mean anything to the tank? The tank's got like twice the health of everyone in the raid. So a flat healing increase means the least on the tank because it's the smallest percentage of their health. And a Holy Paladin casting Holy Lights, it's one big slow heal. And 
the proc at the bottom here, the equip effect, is per heal cast. So the faster you're casting, the better it is. The slower you're casting, the worse it is. So it just doesn't make sense for a paladin that is casting holy lights. Now let's say you're okay, let's say you're a paladin casting flash of light and you're healing low health people in the raid. Um, because flash of light is a cast, there's a decent chance you get sniped by other healers with like circle of heal. Um, you know, maybe even a chain heal if they started casting before you and you were targeting someone else. And so there's a decent chance that even if you target someone below 50% health, by the time your heal finishes, they might not be. And you wouldn't get the bonus. And your Holy Paladin really shouldn't be going around flash of lighting the raid uh, unless you run like two Holy Paladins. They really should be using Holy Light. That That's what they're best at. So now we get to Priest and Arsham. I think Priest has the edge here. And the reason the priest has the edge here is they are the least likely to get sniped. And the circle heal uniquely targets the five people and can proc five extra times. So let me give an example. And this is not even rare. Let's say the first boss of Black Temple has an ability that lowers everyone's health. His shield, you throw a, a spear or a spike at this the shield of the first boss and it blows up. And it does like 8,000 damage to the entire raid. Everyone in the raid is going to be low health after that. A priest can literally machine gun chain heals through the entire raid. And when they do, every single group will get five times the effect of this. So every every circle heal will gain a thousand healing because it'll be like 200 per person every time they click circle. Because the 200 HP equip effect is going to apply to all five people if they're low on health. That is very, very, very good. Now, Resto Shaman, in the exact same situation, will cast a chain heal. And they could potentially get three hits of it. It does work with their chain heal. But, again, three verse five. Their heal comes out slower than circle. The flat plus 200 healing is better on circle because they can cast it faster and it is hitting more people potentially. Not always, but potentially. And the Resto Shaman, while making great use of it, could get potentially sniped by circle heals and stuff before they complete their cast and not get that 50% bonus. But... It is absolutely amazing for Resto Shaman still because their chain heal prioritizes low health targets. They're gonna be chain healing people that are low anyway. And they're also raid healers. So definitely Priest before Shaman. Definitely Shaman before anyone else. And h -Pal before Druid. I think this one, even if you have, if you have a really, really, really good Resto Shaman, I could see giving it to him before a Priest. But I'm going to be honest, I think I think this one's going to be a really hard sell to give to either of the other healers. If your best healer is a Resto Druid, you're still probably better off giving this to someone else because the effect is just wasted. And I would try and just give them something else. If your best healer is a Druid or an H-Pal, I'd be like, okay, dude, you're an amazing healer. You know, maybe we'll give you some tier faster or maybe we'll give you some haste faster. Or maybe we'll give you some of these shared items something but i think the mace is not the play i think i think it has to go to a priest or a shaman now if your shaman's better than your priest that's okay you give the first one to a shaman i think that's okay i do think priest is better than shaman for the weapon but again that is crystal spire of Karabor. if you're giving it to the best healer make it between priest and shaman not between these in 99 percent of cases cool zardoom now this is probably uh, i think this is probably the most troublesome item in the entire phase i think zardoom is going to be the most drama item i don't think it's the best item in the phase but i do think zardoom is going to be the biggest drama item in the phase there are many things that go into zardoom so let's talk about all of them you're gonna see that i don't i have kind of a what we'd call a wish-washy opinion here on zardoom um there's a lot of equal signs here that's not a equal sign meaning they're equal. That's that's not a lot of, that's not a strict, strong opinion, right? 
Uh, and the reason for that is there's a lot of canceling reasons why every class would want this item. So let's start with Shadow Priest, Boomy, and Elemental. These classes, you could argue, deserves our doom the most on a purely spec basis because they do not have access to the sword. And the sword is significantly better than the other options. So once again, if we look at High Warlord Nagentis, the second best option for a Boomkin or an Ellie has 236 spell damage. The Archimond Sword has 259. That's 23 more spell power, and you get extra, extra hit rating in addition to crit. So this weapon is significantly better than that dagger. For that reason, you could argue that a Boomy, an Ellie, or a Shadow Priest all would benefit more. There we are. All would benefit more from Zardoom than a Warlock or a Mage. Second problem. Your Warlock and your Mage are typically highest DPS in classes, especially on Trash. So if your Warlock and your Mage gets our Doom, they would use it to better effect than a Boomy or an Elemental, especially because they do less damage than those classes. Uh, but you could argue that a Shadow Priest would give more mana to the mages if they can cast faster. Shadow Priests also won 146 haste, and that can be very difficult to get if they don't get Zardoom. So they're kind of struggling to hit their haste breakpoint, and Spreece would gain a tremendous amount from Zardoom because it allows them to hit their haste rush point of 146 haste so that they can, the rotation flows well. So you can see kind of the problem we're in here, where the classes that deserve it the least in theory, in terms of how much they bring to the raid with their single target damage and their AOE damage, are also the classes that would not have the best alternatives. Meanwhile, classes like Warlock and the Mage that do the heavy lifting in the raid have the best alternatives. I think that with Zardoom, you just, you just gotta give it to your best players. I think you consider Nexus Key. I think you consider current weapons. Maybe the players that got Nexus Keys first wouldn't get Zardooms. Um, I know a lot of people think that this should be Warlock before Mage. The problem with going Warlock before Mage is that Warlocks get Skull Prime. Warlocks get Tear. Warlocks get neck uncontested. Warlocks get uh, so much gear this phase. So if you give them Zardoom 2, they're getting everything. And the mages are so sad. Now, a lot of people argue that last phase, mage got a lot as well. But in fairness, Nexus Key last phase was much better for mage than the other classes relative to Zardoom right now. Like... A mage getting Nexus Key last phase was a huge upgrade. A warlock getting Nexus Key last phase was like, I mean, not even Biss unless you're valuing the stamina, right? So, it's kind of not a fair comparison because mages getting Nexus Key first is less of a big deal than Zardoom, just because Nexus Key is just not as good for a lot of these. I mean, Spreece didn't even want Nexus Key. Um, you know, Boomy and Elemental did not gain as much from Nexus Key uh, relative to their second piss as like Zardoom is here. So, I mean, all things considered, I think just give it to your best players. Um, consider their current weapons. Consider the weapons they got last phase, who got Nexus Key first. If I had to gun to my head, if I had to pick one class that would have the biggest case for Zara Doom. it's gonna be Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest is never getting Skull. Shadow Priest is last on tier. Shadow Priest is maybe getting some haste items 
if it helps them hit their break point, but a lot of cases is not getting haste items right away. Um, Shadow Priests with the Zardoom are going to be able to hit their haste break point, which is going to really help their rotation flow better. And without Zardoom, it can be really tricky for the priest to get haste. And they might need two haste rings from trash. They might have to get a crafted shoulder, which could put off their four set bonus. It, it, it can get tricky. So because Shadow Priests, the haste really helps them hit their break point. Shadow Priests do not scale very well with stats besides haste and spell damage. They would increase the mana that all your mages are getting and because the alternative that they can use is weak. And relative to these other classes, it's even weaker. Because keep in mind, the Boomy and the Elemental can use that crit dagger. And they like crit. Well, Spreece doesn't like crit. And they can use the hit mace, but they probably don't even want the hit. So even relative to Boomy and Elemental, they would gain the biggest upgrade from this item so if you had to pick one class to get the slight nod and that's why i said greater than equal it's ever so slightly maybe better would be shadow priest but don't give this to a bad shadow priest don't give this to a bad warlock don't give this to a bad mage don't give this to a bad boomy G give this to good players that are deserving and uh i do think this is going to be the biggest drama item in the phase I don't think it super makes sense, considering, you know, I think Skull of Gul'dan is a bigger deal for a Warlock, and as a Warlock, I would be content going for that rather than worrying about Zardoom. So, there's that. Cool. Bulwark of Azanoth. This is a kind of interesting case. So, there's actually a lot going on here. So... In a vacuum, Prop Paladin gains more from this shield. The reason for that is the Prop Paladin is going to be tanking a lot of little mobs. Block value from the shield is better when you're tanking a lot of things rather than one big boss. So the block value is better for them. Because they're tanking a lot of things at once and you're trying to you know make these big ambitious pulls on your Paladin, the armor and the block and the stamina is all going to be great for him. Uh, in a vacuum, that equip at the bottom, too, is much better for the Paladin when he's getting hit by a lot of enemies. So you might say, okay, this is just should be straight Paladin Prio, right? Only problem is, a lot of Paladin sets are using this shield for trash. So pretty much everything I just said goes out the window. Why would you ever give this to a Paladin first if they're going to unequip it for this shield? So that they have more spell damage on trash. Right, And if they're looking for a spell damage trash shield, they have another alternative too that they can use. Right, Now this is still the best shield for a paladin overall in like a balance set or if they're tanking a boss. But you're going to see a lot of sets using the shield as a paladin. Now this is elemental shaman prio, so your, sh your paladin might not get it right away. And if we go over to the warrior angle, the warrior can get the Kazrogal hardened shield. So generally speaking, um, this shield is not as good for a warrior as Bulwark of Azanoth, but it is very, very close. So you should be giving Bulwark of Azanoth to whichever of your tanks doesn't already have a good shield. But the reason why I give the nod to Prot Warrior is it's obviously an iconic item. It matches their tier. It, it looks cool. And let's be honest, Prot Warriors are not getting too much this phase. They're basically last on all the tier. They get a few items uncontested. They do get a weapon uncontested. You know, they're, they're, they're going to get some stuff, but it's, it's basically just all uncontested stuff. They really don't get too much. So you could argue that a prop warrior should get it first, especially if your paladin is going to unequip the shield for something else. Like, what a spit in the face to the warrior it would be. Because um, a warrior, by the way, if a warrior gets Bulwark of Azanoth, they are never unequipping it, right? They would only unequip it if they were dual wielding for very specific instances, right, of trash or a phase of a boss where they're not getting hit. Other than that, they're using this the entire time. If a paladin's gonna like take off the shield, what a spit in the face the warrior would be to like get passed over 
they give it to the paladin. The paladin already got full tier. You're sitting there with no tier. Uh, like that would that would suck. So again, it's it's technically better for a paladin than a warrior. The warrior gets less. The warrior won't take it off. The paladin might. So just kind of look at what gear sets your paladin wants to use. Maybe your paladin doesn't even want these shields and just wants the bulwark. That's pretty easy. Give it to Pally. Um, you know, if your warrior gets hardened shield, they definitely can pass it to the Pally. I play a warrior in raid, a prop warrior, and I'm going to give it to our paladin pretty much no matter what happens anyway. Um, but I still think in a vacuum, though, I, I think this could be an opportunity to give the warrior the item. Cool. Black Bow of the Betrayer. Uh, this is Biss for survival, not Biss for BM. You want to give this bow to survivals, the other bow to BM. Pretty simple. Uh, I'm not a hunter guru, but that is what Veramos says in his Biss list. So listen to that guy. That guy's smart. Glaives. You might be uh, waiting for me to go in depth for 45 minutes on which class should get Glaives more. I don't mind doing that for items like this that have solid drop rates that are probably going to see multiple of. Um, I think it's a mistake to give glaives based on any small increase. I think it would be extremely demotivating if someone came up to me and said, hey, we think glaives are 1% better for a warrior than a rogue, so you're not going to get them. Or, hey, we think rogues are 1% better than warriors with glaives, so you're not going to get them. I'd be sitting there going like, what? Some uh, some tiny little minutia detail, like calculation spreadsheet math is going to, I can't get glaives because of a 1% difference? Like that is a disgrace. So do not, do not, obviously only warriors and rogues can use them. Do not give them out based on class. That is very dumb in my opinion. I think it's a huge mistake. You give it out based on who is more worthy, who deserves it. And if you really can't decide or it's it's a tough decision, just roll it. Just roll it cuz trust me, there is there's no one on this, you know, the planet we inhabit that that would prefer being told I mean, even if you're you're the one who gets the glaives, imagine you're getting glaives and you're like, yeah, we think your class benefits half a percent more. Like that's kind of weird. Um I think rolling would be a better solution than than deciding based on half percent difference, especially because it's such a big increase for like a rogue as a I just say rogue because I know the number off the top of my head for rogues. This is a 10 percent damage increase, uh, even if you're not fighting a demon. That's huge. Getting 10 percent damage is oh, that's a lot. It's a very big increase. Are you really going to? Not give someone a 10% damage increase because it's 0.3% different for the other guy? Like, come on, that's that's silly. So I would heavily, heavily, heavily recommend for Glaives deciding based on player, not by class. And if you if it's close or you can't decide, just roll. Don't don't go with the class that would uh don't go by class. That's just that's insulting to your players. That's that's really silly. So that's my comments on Glaives. So I'm not going to tell you the class that I think should get them, because I do not think they should be determined by class or spec. Onward to the... Oh, I will tell you, though, that they're not good for Pra Warrior. Don't give them to a Pra Warrior. That would be really dumb. Unless he's full re-rolling to Fury or something and is permanently playing Fury or whatever. But yeah, the Pra Warrior. Um, this main hand, some people think that this is Biss threat for Pra Warrior. It would be bis threat for a prop warrior on a fight where they did not have where they had a full rage bar or sorry if they didn't have a rage bar to spend right so on a fight where they're just like not taking any damage or something but most fights warriors gain a lot of rage they have full rage bars and they need a fast weapon so they can heroic strike really fast so this would not be good for a prop warrior in a lot of cases so do not give this to a prop warrior it would be a waste so that, I do feel comfortable saying that, <laughs> but between um, between the rest of the options, yeah, decide based on player, not class. 
All right, chest guard of the Forgotten Conqueror. We're on to tier chest. Um, tier chest for Warlock is not best in slot. They would go to the back of the list. If your Warlock doesn't have vestments, they probably still should get this pretty early because it will be a big upgrade for them and can help them get their four set active quicker. Um, so yeah, if, you're, if your Warlock doesn't have vestments, they can rock the chest. But yeah, Prop Paladin definitely first so they can get their four set then a Warlock with no Vestments, then Holy Paladin. Following it up with Priest, Shadow Priest. Uh, you can give Shadow Priest the chest a little sooner if you want it. It's one of the few pieces that's better for them than the uh, alternatives available, whereas most of their tier is individually not best in slot. This one is. But, um, yeah, they're still... It's fine if you want to put them below Priest. It's best for both. Uh, and this is just more consistent across the token. It makes it a little simpler. Holy Priest before Priest, or Priest across the whole whole board. Uh, Rets, I will mention that Retribution Paladin Chest is actually pretty good. But uh, it's not. Bis, most lists are going to use the chest from Archimond. So you might get all the way to the end of Ret. And uh, if that's the case, you can give them their chest. I could see worlds where you give a rep paladin in their chest before even a holy paladin if you really want it. Uh, if you think they're very far away from the Archimon chest, if other people, like if you have like two enhancement shamans in your guild and no Archimon chest has dropped and both of the enhancements are getting it before the ret, he's so far away from getting his bis chest. I could see giving him a tier chest before a holy paladin or a holy priest or a shadow priest. But um, unless you have a unique situation like that, hopefully he'll get his Archimon chest and get that, and he'll be last waiting for it. Next, we have the Forgotten Protector token. Um, Resto Shaman and Ellie Shaman, it's BIS for both. We're going to give it to them to get their set bonus. BIS for both types of hunters. Um, Arms and Fury both want their chest. It's individually BIS. Even ignoring set bonuses, Arms get a slight nod because their four set uh, is more solidly best in slot for them. And then when it comes to Prot, Prot Warriors already have tier two. Uh, tier five is an amazing chess piece. So it's not going to be a big upgrade for them. And once again, they're going to be taking the Fury option because the, the defense option for a Prot Warrior is very terrible. So once again, if you give the Prot Warrior the Fury option very quickly, they might not even be able to use it. They need to make sure they have enough defense, enough resilience to make this work in their set. So, um, Fury basically last. Enhancement dead last because their tier is terrible. Cool. Chest Guard of the Forgotten Vanquisher. Last piece. Uh, Feral, then Rogue, then Boomy, then Ardruid, then Arcane. Same deal. Bis for all these classes except Arcane. Arcane does not want the chest. Cool. If you're fire, you could definitely mix in the chest earlier. Yeah, that's the deal. That is it, guys. We got through all of the tier. Let me know what you guys think about all the different items. Um, you know, hopefully, even if you disagree with some of the choices I've made, hopefully some of the logic made sense uh, behind where certain items are going. Hopefully some of the, you know, class-based info that I provided has been helpful to understand like which classes need certain items, which classes need certain amounts of haste or hit. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That concludes the list. Thanks for sticking out through to the end here. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.